There's a sprint, there's Molokai right down there, look. Your long distance camera, can you see it? I can. You see Molokai just beyond the pole there. And uh, right on down to Kelly Tower, down in here. Down where you're on that plane, there's a good photo there for you. Take that one right away across the side again, over to my kettle and the way across. That's the town land of Thrummock still? Yes, this is Thrummock still, aye. And Thrummock goes, you see that? You see, we'll go to the water bridge here down in the middle of the shop there. But this is taking our carry more pies and put back into Pumroy. Taking our Pumroy and put it to carry more pies and then taking back again. So that left us, the, that's a, the division there, that river do you see there? See the bridge there? Well, that's, uh, a, that's, a, that's a division between Carrickmore and Pumrae Parish, isn't it? Right. <coughs> Followed the water, you see. Then that's uh, Camona Crooked River there. Turn left there, John, and uh, continue on down to Conway's. We'll get you a photograph of Stone Circle there, first of all. Turn left here. Now, I got books there the other day, and uh, I come at them, and we were talking about what I was talking to you about, both the rain. This is each year I work for them. I said, I, there's a book to send out and I, you need to be a member, he said. Well, I said, I know nothing about membership or anything like that. But they send out, what is it, Trawler Party? That's right, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Pat Hudson gave me, that's right, Pat. He had him very good here and he gave me two copies of it. And then he told about your complex and only they're building it. And he's got a great grant for that. He's got plenty of money this time. Did, uh, but they have to raise the same amount before they get it. They have. Unfortunately, they have to raise, they have to raise <coughs> pound for pound for the grant. You can see the reclamation there, John. You see how they leveled the heights there. Which is no good in giving a man a grant and putting your hand in his pocket one way and taking it out the other. Well, There's more stone circles there, look. <coughs> <coughs> you them stones sticking uh, up in the bog there. You didn't take the bog away, you see, they haven't been excavated then. Right, when you see that house down there now, we are going to that house, they give that bungalow and I'll bring you over here, we'll get permission, they're neighbours of mine and they're not to any harm. You can take a photograph of it because uh, the children was out one day and I was around them here, the school children party. That's right. And I don't know what the photograph came out like, but I was wild up and then I was down in the middle of the garden. Oh, sure. <coughs> Good luck on them. How are you making out John up there anyway? Oh, struggling away. You got it roughing up there this way. Good, yeah. Uh, there's a stone circle. You see that green portion in there? That is a wee summit that they had for neighbour in there in that bow. You see you see the pallets there? There are little green oases in, in the oh, bow. I see it there, I see it well, there. That, that is where the ancients tell that wee bit of ground, you know? It's unusual in the centre of a moss. Now you turn in left here. There's another height there, stripping. One of the stripping that there for going. Well, I'll tell you what that was. John Kenneman is a bank there, and this bloke Rafferty happened to get the land, and poor Kennedy or Kenneman was pushed out. He, he just was going to do away with him, and he, he came in there and he started out. But he found out at the end of the day he couldn't do that. The Kenneman owned the bank, and it was illegal to do it in his own land. So they had a quiet then. Just turn left, John, there. And who was the boat man? Peter Rafferty up there, Q. Rafferty's only got John Andy's place here in Elfie. And he got very greedy, like, you know. When these fellas get something, they get very greedy, and nobody else does live only them. I'll put a beggar on horseback. We are in uh, John Conway's farm in the Trumog. That's uh, slightly north of Craig Moor. More. And uh, this is one of the ancient stone circles which hasn't been excavated yet. Now it's on the list to be excavated but uh, as money has been not planted the Prime Minister which has got the supply of those archaeologists uh, it'll be some time but it's great information is uh, Probably prints and various objects to be found in this circle. There's even probably a burial pot bone. There's a lot of things which would be very interesting. This dates way back till 2500 before Christ. There's no 
actual name on it, is it? Uh, no, it, it never has been. It's been discovered not so long since. Yeah. It's been discovered by Claire Foley. She's the archaeologist, and myself. The Shilokils here is pointed out, and that it's been marked on the map. What's the name of this hill up behind us here? Well, uh, that's known as uh, Peter Slane's Mountain, formerly. Is that right? We're, uh, and Peter Slane's Mountain, his uh, niece was married to John Conway and now owns the lands. That's right. Very unusual, sir. Was this a bit nicer one that you could get, you see, right here? The, well, I'm standing between where two circles meet, and it's a very unusual outline of. Uh, very often where you didn't find them, you found more than one. Aye. They, they weren't existing in, in isolation. And there is the obvious, the second one. But up where John is there, we were thinking there were some stones out on the outskirts there. So what you'd have to do, you'd have to dig away the bog to see. You'd be able to take the bog, maybe three or four foot of bog there, and for the even on that, into that hill from the bog, with across the top of it, you would come on more circles. It's very, very possible. See, the reason that they're exposed there, this is all that has been cut over, obviously the banks are torpid. Like several of the experts who come out here and operate with Con, Claire Foley, and people like that, there. That's their whole life. As, uh, in the uh, near future, or probably in 20 years from now, this will be an education to youth. Uh -huh. And uh, there's a lot to be, when you go in deep into details, there's a lot to be found with those circles, uh, a lot of knowledge to be found out. The, the Irish are they are history conscious, but they also are the superstitious people. And if they thought there was any connection here between graves and giants' graves and beds and things like that, they'd be very, very hesitant to touch them. And oh yes. Luckily uh, enough, uh, they have been like that because. Aye, well, that superstition has been uh, handed down to us, been. and uh, uh, the fact says I heard a clergyman uh, preaching once. He said that uh, if you hadn't. just the same as a graveyard to us, they respected right. their relatives right. and they appreciated this and this was all the little monuments they could afford to put up over them. Oh. So uh, as those bodies lies in the, those circles here oh. and uh, they were mostly cremated bodies, they were born in those little bones, taken up their best friends and put here. And, and generally associated with the stone circles you had these standing stones. That standing stone now that John there beside usually was a marker. The rest guard the circles while they were Armstrong from Rootland, the common saddle there. Had a guard hard to. Armstrong? Aye. Tell the Hoying was Armstrong, you see. Isaac and Mary Ann lived up on Chewy where McCombs lived and well, threw them out. They were on the other side of the house then, were they? Ah, they were, but Mary Ann, they say, it, uh, she used to trick on there after she died, and there was a man telling me, Peter Hart, I said, What is the reason? I what he says, you see. The Catholic midwife would go in then she was halokian. And when the child was born, she was baptized, they baptized the child. And they were baptized right the right? Catholic, but she. Are we going right here, corner left? Uh, turn right to Craig Lee Gravesky. What's wrong with this paper? Underneath the bog, you see. That's why. That's why. why they, once they break through the bog, you see they can, they can uh, let, let the water away. 
these were uh, our first settlers that came to here, and this was a vast forest, you see, in those years, a couple of thousand years ago. I could bring you today to where they're uh, excavating on, and they're digging up a very deep forest in it. And it's interesting to see those four blocks all being lifted. Remember, uh, remember the bank con that you had up on the top of your mountain? That's right. You showed me the big long oak tree, wasn't it? Oh, boy, surely, Paddy. There's, a, there's fierce oak and four lying there yet and buried. And those four in that land there, big trees where they grew. This grew fours and all. That was Peter Owen's house there, Paddy, with that butcher's look. You see the old walls there, look? That was another house of Peter Owen. Oh, Rose. it was? Aye. Uh, have you seen that? You hear it in that book where Barney Owen. Barney Owen, he used to be a good man for the priest there, but Jarman. Yes. He'd carry old tales about Father's playing a dance and Father Morphy was a very contrary man. Yes. And he'd take all the news to him. So, uh, oh, he was an old tale fan. I call him a police and for, or a priest and farmer, do you know what I mean? Right, right. In other words. <laughs> so, uh, that's where he lived there. Oh, there's some rascals around here, too. <laughs> <laughs> did you really, did you really then there's me? another man they called Frank Hart. He was a British man. He lived here. And uh, he came uh, He came from Shanmar. He owned that wee farm. McAnally's bought it. Oh, that's a long time ago. In there, look. These bushes here. Uh, that's Frank Hart's there. What? And there's a well down here. Rafferty closed it in the Manoise carried there. And you know, things didn't go right on him. He shouldn't let it alone. There was a well there to the right, just in there, fellas, in there. It was. And that well should never be towed. These house cutters always carried out, there's no other water. This man was known as, this was all Malloy's land one time, was taken off them. Turn left, John, and stop right in case I'm be coming. Now, go ahead, that's the pipeline there where that bit of a patch is uh, wrecked the road here. This is known as Neddy Malloy's. He was a... What do you call this road here we're on? This is a... Uh, they call this Loch Mallon Road, but it, it's the Gortian Road, we call it. This is a scenic road here. Gortian Road. It takes you up over the side of Craig Mountain. Oh, I... I'll, I'll give you a photograph of something if you want to. This is that's Hart... A, that was Hart's there, was it? That's Barney McAnally's. That's where the shop used to be there. Oh, but that's where Hart... That Hartman come to live. Oh no, he come to live over there, but the McAnally's come to live here in the Bot Hard Edge, you see. Oh yes. Uh, the opposite, that's it, Matthew. Now, uh, we're still in trouble. Is this Pikey Hart's place here? I'm uh, further up here, Paddy. All around the corner. This is Brummage's. Oh, well, that's Brummage's there. These people were Henry's and they were put out of this. In bad times, they were through it. And uh, they were Catholics. Turner put them out and uh, put Dennis away now. That's the same crowd as it works in Omi, their grandfather. And, uh, How did Brummage get into it? Brummage got into the possums. The possums come in and took it to the blackboard. You don't know what the blackboard was, do you? No. If you got into difficulties or that, Sir Key Scared put your name on the blackboard and or Sir John. And it was for ransom then. You did not pay that bit of rent you got the land. Took it over the head and threw them out. You see, this is Thrummock to here now. There's a division between Thrummock and Carrick Moor, look there, that ditch there. You see, we are now, this would be uh, Carrick Moor Parish now, like you heard. The other side's from right. Who left this one in here? But Donald Moor Parish went to Formal Bridge one time, and uh, Carrick Moor wasn't a parish, but it eventually became one. Where was the real parish, you see? Donald Moor. And then, you know, St. Patrick visited there, that's Blackie Hart's there. There's where the last evictions in Ireland ever was there, look, Sally Dolly in that house. Down there, that's the last evictions. Sally Donnelly? Sally, Sally Daly. Daly? Dolly, or Daly. Aye, uh, Sally Dolly. She had two sons, Tommy and Mick, and Sarah with the girl, and they threw them out, but they got back in again there. And they had a plot of land on Craig and Road. Well, there's another of them circles right in there, look. There's a lot of these hasn't been discovered at all, you know. Not at all. That's Procta, there. You hear tell the famous Procta. I hear tell Procta. Well, see the car. There's carrying more there now. See the sheds and all there, the colours. 
Is that your house on the left? Yeah, chapel. Ah. Well, uh, that isn't where Colin killed the complex. It's over to Martha Terney. That's where he started off. More than the, the give has to say, but uh, he, he went over to Mullen and Up then. Oh. It was Mullen and Up, the colour. That's right. He went over to Mullen and Up, but he, he settled down where Terney lived there. There's graves there, I think. <coughs> That's Scalp Mountain where they had to, during the trouble times. There was more ammunition found in that day. I had a cousin who was looking from 30 years after it, from the rock fell down and he was taking out a, a case of bullets, my father and him, to see what they were like. And the bloody rock fell down and took the top of the thing around and Tommy Donahue. Wouldn't it tear There was a lot of stuff had around there, I never burned. That's Loch Madden. Now, the meaning of Loch Madden is she was a woman left for that. Red white houses there. And she was Betty Mellon, not a mal alone what these say, but a me all alone. Mellon. But that other Mellon is the Mellon home and only that's a Protestant home. And Mellon and Mellon is two different things. You see, it's the way you say it. But uh, the Mellon home and only is a mal alone, but this is a me all alone. She was Betty Mellon, and there was a man they called Christian McBride Myrder. And then it was Rowan as Neely McBride, then her son was Neely. Yep. And it was sold to Kieran McCartan. And uh, now, you'd be better to go around if you want to get to this thing. Right round the road, Patrick. Well, what well, you could dive in there, but there's a better lane around the other side. Better lane, not that way. Uh, Crichton up on the road course. Now, look out for the one on the right here if you want a photograph of it. This one's going to be dozed away. And the come on, the fellow that was doing this land stopped him, I don't know. Now you see it there, look. You see it in front of you then, I uh, see that red blank there. Well, the sheep is. Yes. Well, that's uh, another circle too, and it's all circles. Now, the Crudnick and Row circles is the way down there. And the fellow that was there in that house was an American general. He was General James Murrow, but the no account of him. That was, uh, his mother was on ale, and me and them was the relations. He went to America in the War of Independence and become a general. He was a young fella. His officer was, his commander was killed and he got up and commanded the victory in Jettersburg. He fought in Jettersburg. The battle. So he was a big tall, nice fella. The Morris were good people, you know. Who's that house there? That's Patrick Rafferty. That was formerly a man the name of McCrory, that Paddy McCrory. There's a lake there. There's a, there's a genius stuff. There's one of the doors that your man was stopped. Now, I'll tell you a story when you go around the corner here. Do you want to go and take a photograph of that, Jim? I can get it from here, isn't it? Not so well. It's a better one. Let's see, get it proper the other one. You want the thing the right, you know, it looks like I'm going to keep it lazy on your photograph. Go around and take the stones. You know, we'll walk over to that. I would like the thing right, you see. That's a black lock down there, chaps. That lock has been lowered 12 feet. And uh, that's an enchanted lake there. What lowered it to 12 feet? Uh, Drainage? The fella How long are we in here? We're in Crednock Row here. This is uh, the back side of the mountain. That's the mountains of Pumrai. That's or Crednock and Row. Crednock Row mountain there. And uh, those stone stones dates so way back till about 3,000 3, before Christ, roughly. If somebody has tampered with one of the stones, that uh, took away a sample of it here. You can see where they hit it with a hammer and took a piece away for to get a test type of the granite in it and they're, they're an unusual type of granite though they're not just the average stone that's around here wherever they came from. No they're not native stone. 
They're not native, not the same as the one on the mountain. It's a blue one stone, as I call it. Same as Gaik Moor Quay, but these are a different type of stone. And uh, they were, it, it took manpower in those years. They maybe had machinery like what we have now that had been vanished and come back again. It took manpower really to erect them. That's an awful weight. It would be roughly uh, about, uh, to my reckoning, there would be about three tonne there in that boulder to put them up that high. It was very nearly been ruined, this particular site here. Uh, uh, this site uh, was uh, stopped uh, excavation on that and preserved. Lucky enough now it had been preserved because there's a lot of valuable information here to be found when this is excavated. As I told you, it would have been excavated only for the shortage of money. And that's a very valuable site there. There must be, uh, say, urns or burial pots there, or maybe. Bones. Ordinary bones there, yeah. there may be remains of bodies possibly, but they can't say for definite enough at such times that the archaeologists would dig. And this is a, an unexcavated site, it only just has been preserved and maybe at a later date it could be excavated. But you can see that where the bog has been removed there, other stones are already showing. And there behind you again, uh, that looks like another grave burial there, chamber, yeah. another burial chamber there. So until such times as the archaeologists would dig the whole thing, it'd be very difficult to say what exactly it is. And even then, a lot of it would be guesswork on their part because they can't tell you for definite. Like Colin was saying there earlier on, they're not absolutely sure. There's a lot of guesswork there. How do you tell what happened 5,000 years ago when there's no documentation, no evidence? But the archaeologists sift through the, the bones and the remains and the ruins and then they, they come up with their theories. And I suppose that's the best answer we are going to get. Not three, and we had uh, those large fours and the mighty oak which are got in that moss there now. That is really full of old uh, trunks of trees, and they're sound today as they were three or four thousand years ago. They're preserved with the bog because there's no air, they're intact, like there's no air getting at them. And they're a beautiful tree that could be uh, lifted and put into use, even yet they're so sound. But, uh, Getting away from the point it had been across scrublands or forest. Ireland was covered until our first settlers came here and they just cut their clearings in. And um, when their people died, they appreciated them, same as we do as a graveyard. And they placed those stones in memory and put that little surround and preserved it there to incriminate their blood. probably come across those when this is excavator. And that's what it is. Over here you see Loch Malin. This is Loch Malin Con was talking about earlier on. I'll just turn. Uh -huh. Aye, that, the Black Loch now, that has been a very deep lake and as yet to but there's about ten or ten, roughly ten foot there according to what we see, judging from the, in the distance, about ten foot of water that has been drained off it for to drain the lands around. And uh, you can see in the, those drains, the, the, the trees, the four trees, the remains of them sticking up there. And on the far side of the lake, you can see the four blocks all along where it grew a forest. You see that, do you? Yes. The white piece uh, is sticking up. The white up. piece is sticking up is uh, the trunks of trees. So apparently, as far as we can understand, with those boulders, those mighty boulders have been lifted, there's a theory that our great ancestors were as far advanced and further. They had flying ships, they had mighty excavators, they had everything we have today, even more. But then the mighty cut that all off them and left them ordinary beings to struggle and fend for themselves in a, a fruitless world that they had to make their living and exist. They had existed. then. So there's a big theory to that far advanced. They've even got out on a battery type of machine that has been come on in a hill that uh, they communicated years ago, same as they do now, an electronic type of thing. And they've got that and it's preserved it out in Africa. So we're in a dark world. We're still in a dark world. We can't figure out really <coughs> the meaning of this. 
what is here, what type of machine was really used, we're still groping in a dark world. Well, we're put in a dark world and we'll leave one, we'll leave a dark world. But uh, we'll have a better way of existing now than we have in those years. Those critters had a fence for themselves. There must have been young people when they could race food on what you see at Ark Mountainside. They grow a little grain and keep themselves alive. They were small farmers. They didn't have to be too old, around 30 years old, and with the lifespan of them. And uh, that race of people has disappeared. We are now known as the Great Malaysians. Well, our race of gold is not coming out from the machine in here, which is looking very like it. The world exists that long, but I'm thinking the world will disappear and there'll be a few critters left and they'll populate it all. Show you someone coming back. I would nearly take you up and show you. There's a lovely countryside there. You see that? There's a nice scenery. That's the quarry there. The Telly Hog, Mickey Telly Hog. Look. Stuart and Lee's. See where that van is there, John? In front of you. That red uh, van. Turn right there. Oh, do you want to get a photograph of Camelot? Aye, yeah. right, I'm going to take a photograph of that. Go on up around the corner then. We'll go back to the cup bedroom. This is this will be a good photograph. Is that that's not the Tully Hog, is it? That was the seat of O'Neill? Oh no. No, different. No, another it's uh, only an M6 Tully Hog, but you ever get a photograph of that, did you? No, I never did. I'll be down now, Lord Lemblood. What a what a good day that day, Paddy. God I never mentioned it to you. In a definition. Aye. I I enjoyed it anyway. At least I enjoyed it too. Oh, he's a good wee fella, too. Isn't he, bud? Mm hmm. This is here. Well, we think he's one of us. What do you call that, Lough? Cam Lough. Cam Lough. Cam Lough. Or is it the quiet Lough? Oh, Cam means crooked, you see. Crooked Cam. Cam, aye, that's right. Cam, Cam Owen. Cam Owen. Cam Owen. The crooked, the crooked, right? The crooked Lough. You can really go in there, John. Go there, John. Go in there and just fill and get a photograph of that up the valley. There you are. Get up on the ditch, John. This is Stuart and Lee's. This is Lee's, I am Mark, that's Stuart's left. Oh, they better give away that lodge. Now, the gate lodge this belonged to the dares or boys, and this should be swans in this lake. There you are now. Well, Stop the there, John. Hold it. Right. Let's go back a bit there, John, and get some of these swans. You see in there, Emma? Mm hmm. Can you. There should be five swans in this. Where you are now, can you get it? Ah, look, do you see them down the one corner? Look? Two big ones in under. The one car is. Two young crowd of wee ones. Mm -hmm. See the wee ones under? Can you get that in the, in the camera, Eamon? Can you? You can. Will I clean that one day for you? You're right. You can let the one day down, maybe, can you? Pull it back, just open it up. Could I pull the one day back? Pull the door back, just pull the door, hold the door back. The bloody thing is right. Actually, oh, there's a good view. What are you talking about? There's something there. What uh, town lawn are we in here? Camelot, uh, isn't it? Camelot. Camelot. Came Camelot. from Sulkin into, into mm -hmm. one edge on this, okay, isn't it? Uh huh. It was actually being. I wish you know nor more nails. More nails. I wish you know. I wish you know. It's on the gate lodge. On, on the gate lodge. John's Pothers and I, that used to be the gate lodge. There's a boat on that, you see. There's a very strange story to see where we are. That was all that off. There was a car door up on top that took away the hill there. You see that hill in front of you, Paddy? Yes. Well, the lane went over there, and those three people went to uh, Cookstown on an Easter Saturday to get the Conlins up the road here where Jimmy Edison lives. They had a family of four, a boy and four girls, and they went to uh, Cookstown, the man and woman, and they come on an awful snowy evening, and instead of coming the other road, they came this way, and they got up on the hilltop here, and it was so wild of a storm that the two was drowned in the loch that fell in, the two was drowned. So 
the lock was up the height of them trees, you see. And uh, they didn't know what to do or where they went, but they went for a fresh and carried more. And it came out on the. Uh, Ah, there's all flows there. We're in the bed of the lock, man. So the priest came out and he read, and the whole country yelled, and they were all around, and just the, here, look, somewhere. The dog just yapped. He said, that, Look, he says, Give me a spade, he says to this fella. So the fella got him a spade, and he dug a square hole, and he took quick silver out of his pocket, and he poured into it, and all of a sudden he says, Everybody stand back. And that valley busted there and made matters all the way down there. We turn left here. Turn to that red one there. Aye, it's the red one, John. Well, they should not be allowed to leave the countryside like that, mate. No, we have to get past that one. So, uh, every Easter Sunday there will come bands and there will be sport here and that's the coming up here. It's all done away with That's very nice, fellas. Well, these are quarries and these boys should be made to put me back to where they got it. Ah, they're in the country, see. Uh -huh. There's nothing nice over there now. It's attacking them there. And they were very wide, weren't they called? Oh, God, they were six-foot paddy. A regular six-foot. I, John, up around the corner here now, there's a fella drowned over there in that lake. He went up and drowned himself. Didn't think three of the one race of people drowned themselves. Not an odd thing. All within a very short time of Are we still in Camlock or are we in a different You're in Camlock and Row now. We we'll turn left, uh, just there, John. If you could only get pulled in, mend the corner for it's very serious. God, you could go down that lane, boy. You could have driven down the lane. Oh, you can drive into the house. There's a family living in the house, isn't there, John? No, nobody now, Paddy. They left and children from around the new houses. They left. Oh, God, famous. Actually, well, I suppose if you're living out here till you get tired of it. Yeah, I've got no one to school, Paddy, like you know, it be sad. Red haired people. Red haired dames, they're all red alias. As red as. Oh, oh Christ, it's in red hair. Mod red. Oh, mod red, right, and uh, damn nice folk they are. They're lovely, Hala, that morning. Blooming, Hala. The purple Hala, boy. There's, there's stones now, look. See? Up there, Paddy, there's where the schoolhouse was, do you see? That's Helen MacDonald teached up there, look. Yeah. That's right. That old school teacher. And panel days, uh, you weren't supposed to be. Teaching at all, isn't it? Oh, Christ, you would be executed for that. Or you had to come under some ransom of Britain, you see. None of them wouldn't do that. Hi. Hey. Good morning, Paddy. Good morning. They were there to come back, Paddy. Ah, it'll be for all the length will be up, I know, down the head will go out. I think Kona could leave that gap open. Yeah, they the best will come back, Paddy. Who formerly lived in here? There oh. were uh, a man they called Mickey Ely Rafferty and his daughter Maid, who four girls reared here. And his daughter married a fella called Kevin Connor from Craig and Chapel. And Kevin had a big family, and they're all pretty genius and clever. And when they got education, they left here, and they're in good jobs all. And Kevin and the wife went into the new houses in Pumroy. Kevin, caretaker of this thing. Ah, yeah. oh, right fella. Nothing wrong. Modest Too long to the grass grow time. Right. He's come to speak to Aye. Look at the head just growing out and uh, mind you. It was a very sheltered wee spot, wasn't it? You could have got a drop of the hooch around here oh, one time. This was a place for it here, alright. Aye. Mind you, you wouldn't know when home dry. Thomas Dunne will tell you stories about parking and around here. Great, right, sorry. This was some grip one time. That's Mickey Ailey there. You could leave your wagon there. Yeah. Good, sure. Ah, because it was a happy a wee home too. Like, well, uh, this is a good example of a typical Northern Irish chamber grave. It dates from Neolithic times. Over uh, 300 comparable graves are known. Gathered over the northern half of the country. Well, closely related tombs are also found in southwest Scotland and the Isle of Man. It is sited in a countryside of a long ridges of sand and gravel known as Eskers. 
left by the retreating glacier of the Ice Age. At an altitude of just over 200 metres, the surrounding cairn is approximately rectangular in plan, about 30 metres long and roughly about 15 metres wide, and is composed of uh, rather large boulders, now presenting a ragged outer edge. Any curb stones have uh, presumably rolled or been moved downhill. The two uh, segments burial galleries opens onto a forecourt at the E end. At the side stones, which now stands to heights of uh, 0.53 to 1.47 metres above the present level of the gallery floor. Those of the inner segments are noticeably lower than those of the outer. You can see that by looking at them here when uh, you walk around. One of the pair of jam stones which subsided the gallery uh, is in a position, but the other has fallen. The gallery is weighed uh, 2.25 metres, and the outer segments and was originally roofed with capstones. Well, there will be a flag type of stone. One of these uh, uh, survives its outer edge, still supported by the portable stone, and its inner edge fallen to ground level. The top of the portable stone were apparently originally spun by a narrow linted stone which now stands displaced on end between them. In the rear of the cairn are two lateral chambers which side and end stones raised from 0.5 not to 0.91 metres above the present level of their floors. It will be noted that the entrance to this subsidiary chamber are provided with postal stones and to this extent at least showing the same design principle at the main burial galleries with its entrance narrowed by a pair of postal stones. So it's a very mansion place this yeah. and uh, it's in the townland of Craignacon Row, just shaded by the mighty mountain. In the parish of Craignacon In the Moor. parish of Craignacon Upper. It's uh, practically the last outpost of the Craignacon parish. We're very close to the borders of Kildrest and Pomroy on the other side. Mm -hmm. And uh, it juts into a point this way. And it's a very long stretch and very big, mighty big parish. And this is one of the... Uh, monuments that are in their parish, which is noted for a lot of those historical monuments. Well, go in now, Con, just have a look at what we've been hearing about there. This is the court cairn here that Con had been telling us about there, on our way in. Well, there's a bigger, a far, far bigger one down at, down at Ahenry, though. Were you down that way? I never saw the Ahenry one, and they tell me that in Johnny Bigley's Mountain there's another one part of there. I'm not doing anything like Ahenry. There's the sweat house in Johnny Bigley's Mountain, and there's the marsh rock. But we wouldn't have time to do all that today. No, you would not. Maybe some other time, that. We've had a lot of corners to get around yet, you know. But that wasn't man Close it. Look forward a bit, Joe. My God, they shouldn't have closed it. Well, they must have bothered. I know. Sure, there'll soon be a way off. Recognize that you should never close an old pod like that. No, nor close a well on anyone. Mother, what you have, you're an enemy of the ears, and not let them no. carry away. That's right. I've seen people in our country in the two parties just kill another lad and crash their horns on them like that, you know, and they'll stand up and got you. <laughs> and I'd be afraid of Tom Lynn's books, they called them. Uh, Tom Lynn kept these books. It's all son, they came all them hills. And now it's all son, a millionaire's job. They've made a fortune of it. But it wasn't, it wasn't what happens in them years. It's all the changes come. There wasn't much money though come back into the pure critters. Oh, God save it. Us. Uh, and even when they sell it, they'll contact or con them too. Sure they never got the price for it, Paddy. Sure, the reason these boys didn't. <coughs> 
didn't put much back on the table. Big Freemason, what does he care about you? That's what that is. Cleared the leaves. There's a great show of hair at the minute. Anyone was up here, Paddy McAhoon was shot up that road. No, Paddy was shot up. I own it just over the road there. That's right, just right over the wee minute. That's for that lad there, right one. Even when he's down one morning, down to himself here, in Goldstone. He's up that wee lane there, looking through himself to the lower. Up this, this fella there? Aye, that's for Jimmy Ellison. Jimmy's a convert. Up there with them kettle, two kettles, there's a lot for in there. Yes. That's right, Mickey Mullen used to. I used to come with that yarn to yard to spun with them. He got spun. And I'll could spin some great yarn. And if you wanted a historian, these were well, we're going down this first house on the left side, Rafferty's. Mickey Rafferty's son lives here. You mean the builder? Yes. Son of he lives here. But those Speed Queens owned this in Barney Sailors. That was a lock while driving through there now, John. Was it? Uh, there, that was a lock. It was filled in, was it? The road was made through it. But they could tell you anything for centuries back, these queens were, if no one right. I know they were good historians. Them old people, you could get great information off them. They educated the world like, around them, but uh, unfortunately a lot of younger people would scorn you there and they'd lack this thing. Folklore and all that sort of thing. There's another house over there, was it? That was Barney Frank Thomas, where he, he was Rafferty too. And Mickey Frank Thomas. You know Packy Rafferty. You know the, you, you know Martin that is a... He had a barn cooked and them lads' father was right there. What? Aye. Uh, or their mother, Maggie Frank Thomas. And they have a bar. Now they bought Captain Kilpatrick's paper shop there, my friends. And doing well, them shops. Well, they weren't right there. They were out in Cookstown. Oh God, they were here then. You see that red house of John and Black Mix or Barney the Devil there? Yes. That's where the Barney the Devil was there. Oh yes. Did oh, you they have a boarding house in Carrick Moor? That's, that, that, that's, that's right. Have you got this in Lagion? These boys just want them to who we are, do you see? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Hello, John. How are you? You ready? Who's that, man? Uh, mm-hmm. uh, did you ever think that house was sinking a wee bit? There. Uh, that's the stone house that's built in it off by. That house, I must have uh, sat to 20 tenants before they repaired it. And the lock itself, it, when there would come a flood, you, the water would be up, chairs floating in it. Just probably the gravel of the water, you see, yes. underneath. In that car. That is where the famous master offered he lived here on the right. That's Barney the Devil's over there where he was reared, over on the right there. It's on the farmhouse? Aye. That middle house. Who's right. living in there now? Big Scared Buccaneer lives in Charlie Black. Mick lives in there. Do you know them culture boys that it's known me them uh, two lads, the Buccaneers? Uh, That's where their father was. Aye. Charlie Allen. Jahal. Aye. Who lives here? This is where Master Rafferty lived, was That's where the famous Master Rafferty lived, and now the Potters have bought that. There's no Rafferty's now, they're all gone. The Potters are taking this company over. Look up the valley, there's my young YouTube. Look up there, those where the Morris come to first, with those slayed houses. Isn't it like an English residence, boy? It's like a two-story house. It is, man. It's a beautiful looking house. The Morris built down. Well, is Maggie Ann living in it? Maggie Ann got her leg broke, or she was got there by the priest with her leg broke behind the door, and she's back again living there, and she was away. Now, could you get a photograph of that thing? Open that door there, God, That's where the famous General Morrow was reared. Up in the bushes? Up in the trees. Do you see those trees? Well, they were banished there, and they were banished from Donald Moore because he married Peggy O'Neill, a namesake of my own, he was a Presbyterian. And he married this girl, and they were banished, and they gave him the ten on a Craig and a row. Scott Murray was a Scott planter, you see, a Presbyterian, I suppose. And they gave him this ten on a Craig and a row, and eventually the skirts come into Carrick Moore, and they confiscated it and left them with a hundred acres in that farm and a hundred in this one. You see, this was another brother who lived here. Now the McGrews has bought this. They are all dead out there, Morris. But in County Monaghan, close to Clon Tibbert, Castle Blaney, the Morris went up, Terry Morris went up there and he married a girl. And I don't know her name, but she's dead. And he had four little girls, and they're in New York, one of them, and there's one of them, Marty Lafala, 
Carl or Mac Carl. So whether they are dead or not, they sold that and they got 6000 for that big place and instead of keeping it, now they've asked us both they did sell it. It's worth 100000 today. Well, what is the what is the Mulgrew doing with that? Mulgrew is real normal at night, buddy. Well, it's to be. The in Inland Revenue come at the Mulgrew. One of You are never should trust, that's never should trust school and the black law. That's correct. And we are travelling now. Uh, we're into the town on a shotgun, aren't we? Aye, we're into the town on a shotgun. Aye, this is. Uh, never should trust here and uh, shotgun. Bond next. Hi, we're looking down at Green Castle and got you down there to the right. Is that another, one of the Rockleys that built that house, is it? Uh, this is one of the Rockley brothers here, and that's another what he's reared over there. That belonged to John Mickey Henry, but that bungalow was there. Yes. That's where Patsy Conway was reared, over there. Now, this is the mighty moss again, here, that word. And they all say it's coming. way at the other side of that, you see? Aye, aye. Uh, we come down by the rest of way. Well, you'll not have to go to Craigland and the Vesky today, today, those bile chambers, no? No, I've got a really good film of it. That's uh, very good. And, uh, and I've got an explanation to them, you have got them all. As best we can, like, it's a short, um, short bit of an act in there, how they originated and what they were. There's a drain there, and a drain to like now. Do you want to go on down to Terry Cole with this corner? Oh, do you God, want no, Paddy. You'll drop me off because I have to go to Dunham more now to dig up a load of stuff. You see there, I, I get some timber there that's uh, shortless, you know. Right. I arranged one that I would get the timber. Right. It's useful to me, Paddy. What so we we'll have to go down in the evening. Barney's building a house and... Uh, I was right with Barney there. Ah, oh, you were. Isn't he building there? He's building six inch blocks. Oh, that's right. That's a good lad, Barney. I got here some house built on there. I got to the crit there. Suffered with that thing that could. Now we're putting in sailage and everything, we're held up, you see, but we just got out now, Paddy. We're hard finished to make you a bit of change here, but it'd be useful. A lot of money back in them, I think. Oh, it's just her. But it's a chance now you'll never get again. That's right. If you miss opportunity, all these schemes, the worst them the best, not that everything's gone west. They're, they're cut down now, Tara, Paddy, on Oh, they're sure they right. Well, I was telling you about Mara. Oh, God, I forgot to tell you about the fella throwing the stone over the black loaf and beating all the police. But this is Mickey Martin's hill here. That was Mickey Martin. Peter Harry owns this farm now. There was a wee lot of Martins around here one time. That's where they cut the turf, John. That must have been a very late cut there, was it? That was the third cutting there of the year. It was. Give them bother to get that. Go on, the bother with them. They yeah, will. Be great. Bother to be greedy. Oh so, God! That man come from Dark Morn cut that, and he's selling them out to people. He's cutting the. the he's not a torch man. What are you man. saying there about throwing the stone over the black lock? Well, uh, this fellow was one of them morons there. He's putting to be bothered, and his mother's one of them nails of the hell under, and. Uh, the house he was, you see in there that you're looking at behind them. Aye, that's right. Well, those trees, like he was. A bit sad more after they'd been banished up here with her, and he had seven sons then after that. But those trees, he wanted something like Donald Moore, and because he took the beech trees from Donald Moore and he planted them there. And that's why, if you look at Donald Moore, you'll get all the same kind of trees of Donald Moore there. That's why he planted them there. And they're beautiful trees too. Oh God, aye. They're real beautiful. An unusual thing in the mountains to get them, you know. But what was it about the stone? Well, all the, this man Miller was murdered, you see, and it was all Ireland police force RIC then. And they're all big 
Kulki Machen, my old men and cork men, and they were very talented fellows like him. This little fellow went over, he was about 18, and he went over to see what this crowd of police was. They were, you know the way they killed him there, like soldiers throwing stones and codding about, but he got these boys just throwing stones from the top of the hill down to see he could throw it into the loch. But there was one particular fella, and he was real good, and uh, but the, he says uh, this co copper, do you see, he was uh, in charge, and Mora didn't know that. He would be the commanding officer with him, or like DA at that t at this time. And he says, uh, tomorrow, what do you think of that? Gagging the lad, you see. So the fellow says, uh, oh, he says, it's middling. Why, well, he says, do you think could you do any better? You know, that's got his goats a bit, you know. A big ignorant man, and he says, ah, uh, oh, well, he says, I couldn't do no worse than anyway. Oh, God, he says. To this other boy, he says, y you fancy, this wee fella fancies himself. Let him have a throw. So, uh, the god mother said, ah, oh, well, no, he says, there may be better throwers than me here. Well, I'll just tell you something, he says, you want to know. I have the champion finger stone thrower of Ireland here. He's an Air Force, he says, and uh, you'll just see him throwing in a minute or two. He says, would you like to have a throw again? him? Oh, because Ma says, like that money was scarce, do you see? And, well, he says, I, I would, he says, but, uh, well, this is the DA to make it worthwhile, he says, I'll tell you. A horseman was a big silver coin, you see. In those years, like a five shilling piece it was. And he says, there's five shillings, he says, you can beat him, he says, for you. And God Morris says, he tightened the jacket on him, he says, fair enough. Uh, well, he says, come up here, you boy. He took this other constable up, or whatever he was. And he says, this fellow's challenged you, he says, now. I didn't challenge him at all, Morris says, but I'll throw, he says, and if you bet me, it's okay. Well, it's five bob for whoever wins, fair enough. I better crack, you see. So Morris says, let me pick me stones first. So we picked three, how many shots did you get? You get three, he says, and he'll get three. And uh, you can pick your own stone, he says, or um, constable up, and the two go side beside, and uh, Morris says, you throw first, he says, constable. So the constable threw uh, first, and he put the first stone halfway out in the lake. And uh, he says, go ahead again, and he threw the next one. It'll be very near the far brew, you know what the brew is, the bank. Yes. And uh, the last shot, he didn't make the bank with it, it went into the lake, very close to the, to the brew or bank. So Mora was ordered to throw then, commanded to throw, and he threw the first one. He put it very near the far bank, the next one close to the bank, and the last one he cleared it out about 50 yards on the far side and beat the constable. And the DA says, well, the five children is yours, young fella. He was the best stone thrower in Ireland. The better stone thrower in the constable that was best. Tell us first of all where we are, Paddy. This is on or off? Oh, I just keep it on. Hope it's on. Right. This here is the townland of Mollis Lynn. We're now standing on the edge of a ring fort, a rath. This is one of the biggest in this locality, and probably one of the best preserved. We are now are standing on the top of one of the the ditches. This is the inner ditch, and you're looking down now towards what would correspond to the shoch or the drain in between. And then there was a second ditch there on the out on the outer side. Now this type of fortification would have been used right down into comparatively modern times, right down until the Middle Ages. As you can see, the centre of it there is fairly fertile. Now, the inner ditch, the inner dike, there would have been built up, and as you can see, it has been, holes have been dug in it, and rabbits have taken some of it away, and farmers walking at it over the years, cattle, animals walking back and forth, so it's, it's not in as good a shape as you might expect. But, if you could imagine what this was like in the Middle Ages, the cattle could be brought in here at night, there were no fences, no barbed wire fences then, so they had to have some way of keeping the cattle at night. So if the fields around were being used for animals, they could be uh, brought in here. There would be a, a wooden fence 
running around the outside to contain the animals. Also, there will be living quarters in here for uh, the important family, maybe two or three families in the clan, and their huts, uh, wooden houses, clay and wattle houses would be inside this area as well. And uh, it wasn't as if it was something that would be under attack. You might think initially that it was some kind of a, a castle or a fort for defence purposes, but uh, really it was to contain the cattle inside, so we are told. But it possibly could be fortified, it could be defended if the occasion arose, but that wasn't the reason that these ditches were built around it. Now, the hull is outside the inner ditch, as you can see in this case here, maybe as much as 10, 15, 20 foot deep. So even the cattle did get uh, through the inner fence. They still had to get out to the outside, so there was a, uh, another dike there, and it as well could be staked off, and there was generally one entrance. I think it might be somewhere there in front of us. You may wonder why there are so many trees and that growing around here. Well, there are two reasons. The uh, stakes that they would use very often would grow. The ditch itself was generally of clay, soil that had been dug up, so it was fairly fertile. So you'll, you'll see as we come in there, the path that we came in, you'll see that uh, the ditch or the dike on either side of it was covered with hedges. Well, those hedges very often grow. There's a variety of, of uh, shrubs, plants growing here. You can see there in front of you, you can see the broom with the pods on it. You can see the whins, the thorn, of course. I think there's an apple or a plum tree over there. But with the cattle and all in this area, and the soil being dug up, the, the ground would be reasonably fertile, so it was inevitable that uh, these trees, that these plants would grow. If you look over there, you can see the rowan, the mountain ice. There are several examples of them in this particular place as well. Reasonably well preserved. The um, people tell me that there were a series of these all across the country, and generally one would be viewable from the other. The old people called them fourths. The earliest word for it, I think, was lis, and you get that word lis occurring in lots of various place names. Lis Mallard, Lis Nevi, lots of places like that there. But this is one of the best preserved. We are very fortunate that it is in as good a condition as it is. A lot of the macula have been removed because the ditches, being clay, are very easily removed and have been into uh, farmland. But this one here is in good condition, and and we hope that it can be maintained even at this level. You look. You're looking out there again towards Bernice Glen. And are we out over six mile cross, Ballon Train, six mile cross in that direction there. But being a hazy day, you probably wouldn't see that much from it. But generally they were on a fairly prominent position, fairly high up. There generally was a good view from them. Sure, there was a, there was a, a kennel over there. They used to 
I mean, I've been born about there in that kill. Once, like when I was at school. And where did they get the clay? The, we're all blue clay here. That right, the middle. And Paddy Grugan there has his, his place up at home. Yes. Up there where his grandfather come from. Yeah. They have, there was a place up there they used to call it the brick hole, where they dug uh, the blue clay out of. Come on, and don't be starting out in there. Uh, I love this morning. He's afraid of me in this camera. He's afraid of me in this camera. Father Mickey was born in there. Father Mickey Ward? Ah, I thought I'm on Shannon Ward now. And when Senior Ward was born in there. And we used to sleep down in that room down in there. And John and Minnie and Mickey slept in that upper room. And there was a weak crack in the wall. And we used to sh shout it all through the wall. Didn't they? <laughs> yes. Didn't they? Uh -huh. Well, what was Monsignor Ward? Uh... Monsignor Ward was Minnie's uncle, brother of a father's. Is that right? Mm hmm. Where, where was he? Monsignor Ward died in Machrafeld. I went back a few years ago there. He, is he buried in Carrick Moor? No, 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 no. He's buried in Machrafeld. Well, then we had, Dad had a cousin who was a father, Frank Ward. And he was in Caledon for a long time. As a matter of fact, I think he died in Caledon. You must ask Denny that we, now. We have a book at home now with all the uh, names. I just must look it up. Well, Father Frank Ward was there. He's a full cousin of my father's. They come from Brackey. Yeah. Well, that was now the and was all them buildings all built all with brick? All brick and they were all one of blue clay. All locally. All that was That's all that. That's very unusual, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Look at the uh, telling. That used to be a great crack, you know, when they'd, they'd have to sit up with it. Yes. I don't know what length, I couldn't tell you now. I suppose if I had been interested in it at that time, I would have been fit to tell them. Oh, the length it took them to burn the brick in the fire. Well, they'd have to sit up with it and keep the keep the same heat. Uh, well, your memories of it, what did it kill? What was it fired with torf, was it? Torf, surely. Torf, uh, I don't know what way they did that. Had, uh, to, uh, there was some, I mind a man over there, he was from Strip. He was corn, and he was terrific at it. Uh -huh. He was the man that built the... Put the kills. I uh, fixed the kills or whatever way they done it. Yeah. Well, I mind him burning them down the road there. I kill a brick. It's not, there wouldn't be many parts of the country where all they'd have a build of brick, do they? No, no. Mostly done with stone. Aye. Uh, that stone there. There used to be a shade there. Uh, and many of the time, we were nearly and we'd look at that. And God rest, Jimmy Huey was here in the red of it his house there, and he used to see that lots. Don't, under any headline, he would say, don't ever take that wall away if he wouldn't get a wall. How they got them fixed in? And I mean, in those days, there was most of the things. Cement or anything like that. No, I was uh, lime and, and uh, sand, I suppose. The way they got them all fitted in and weaving. Well, this was Ward. Was both these houses Ward? Oh, uh, I and that house down there was Ward. That was Ward. These two right? and the house across the born there. Right. That was Ward. That's what he meant because this was known as Ward Street. Ward Town. Ward Town. <laughs> That's right. This was Ward Street here. Well, what town line are we in here? You're in Mullisland, but Mullisland. this is quality. We still keep up the quality out. We never let that go. Any letters or anything, man, we would always put cool there. We don't how want do, that. How do, how do you spell that? C U L A T Y. Okay. But I think the right way to start it is C U L A G H T Y. Yeah, okay. cool uh -huh. I think that was the way it was. But we still keep it on. We don't want that. Uh, we don't want to let our identification go. Uh, and you're quite right. Too. Uh -huh. Oh no, that used to be a row of fetched houses. Right down there, I think. Kurote, the town land in Mollishlin, we're talking to Nellie and Tizi Ward, Ward sisters. And we were discussing earlier on there, Lockdown, people going to Lockdown now, and we're comparing to with what it was like in the olden days, how the people went to Lockdown and the traditions that were associated with that. Anybody want to tell us? There's a woman lived over there, she was, what do they call her, Nellie? She was Jane Donnelly. Jane Donnelly. I tell you, she was, she was married to a man the name of McCann from Mullis Lindy up there. Yes, yes. And she used to walk across the mountains. She lived in the wee hut over the road there. And this side of, you know who Ben Dunley lives? I know the spot. Well, she lived up there in the wee hut. A wee sawed hut. hut. A wee sawed hut. And she used to go on her bare feet across the mountains. She had no shoes on her or nothing. And long was it taken for her going to lock her? I don't know now, Daddy. We didn't ask him that, but she always... She always went every year to Lockdown and she went to her bare feet. 
and walk back again. Back, back, back again. Back. And did the pilgrimage in that? Do you remember those ones that was on the radio on the television? They wanted the one that a man went on his bare feet yeah. across the, the mountains. Incidentally, that hut that you were talking about there, was that a long league hut that was built there? Was she dispossessed? Was she put out of her place, was she? I would say they were. They were put out of their place. They were put out of their place. Because they I had a place up there where Smith has moved. Because <coughs> I seem to have heard the story that, that the neighbours actually built that hut for her there. Aye, and she used, and to come used to come windy nights with the roof to be blue, but my father used to go up the roof for her for after the windy nights. They built it with swords and they covered it with, I think it was, well, they put a canvas I think you know. They would have put on branches and then they would have on uh, feather. That's right, that's right. But maybe in later years they used canvas, didn't they? Mm. I don't know, but Daddy used to go on and she'd come over for Daddy when the wine had blown there. And there's no trace of that hut there now at all, you see? No. Her kitty when Nora was in it several times. Her kitty minded the hut. She minded the hut and she used to go to Jane. And she said they used to have to get up on the hut and look down the chimney at her. Mm. She was sitting at the fire then, creep out. A lot of that area there that we are talking about now has been cut over, the bog has been cut out. Oh, of it. yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Would you remember turf banks along there, along the edge of the road there, or was that before your time? No, that was before our time. Yeah. But you know where Patsy cuts are there? Uh -huh. There was a road turf banks away down there, but I can drive a good piece down, you know. Well, even I can remember where Pat has a turf stack there. I remember an old a turf stack there, there used to be a big uh, one. There's a bank not so far down, isn't it? I mean, there was always a turf stack up along the edge of the road. That's right. But it seemed to be a very, very big turf stack too. Oh, aye. That would be Patsy's father always sold to And he, he would he cut... He used to sell a load of turf and you went to six mile cross a cat load of turf. Uh-huh. And you'd get five shillings for it. Five shillings? Yes. But that was like everybody around here. So Daddy used to sell turf. That would be seen to think so little of money now. My father used to cut turf for money would that be Jackie would his grandmother. And he'd cut 20 load of turf We'd spread them and reckon them and draw them at a six mile cross and you'd get five pound and ten shillings for them. <coughs> Twenty cart load of turf. And that was a lot of money probably in those oh, days. Yeah, the day he would come out here would be Phil David. I would say David would be with five pounds. Oh, that's right. That's right. You'd feel that he had a lot of money, wasn't it? I would. It would be a lot of money. And would the cross have been the main fare for this I would used to go to Berra too and sometimes it would go to Loma. But six mile cross was there. Was the venue. For selling the turf, that uh, one? Most of them all had oh, to It, it the was the 19th, was it? Was it the 19th? The 19th of Fair. Month. No, but the then it wouldn't be. 19th of month, month, month was Six Mile Cross oh, Fair. fair yeah. But the very seldom of them would go on a fair date, he still thought. Oh, no. No, the cat was out there in the open market. They, John Lyons over there went, I think, summer one that he never missed a day going to the town. Of the so it was one every day? Mm-hmm. Every day. Well, that, were they what stripped the bog? When they would cut the bog away, what would they do? when they would expose the clay. Well, they didn't do anything with it. Well, sometimes they would, you know. They would make new land with that. They would, I, sometimes, not often. But like those fields of pots there on the, on the head of the hill over there, sure. I mean, you see, they call it the new land. You see, they have three fields. That was that was cut away for. What? Because they always called it the new land. Right. It was made out of bog. Well, how would they do that now? How would they convert it back into? Well, I think they had to dig it through. They, they dug it first the and then just, you know, put the ball was all cut away and it come down to the clay. Right. I mean, down our lower bog, when the, the bank was cut out, you'd just come to the clay. I know, but if you left the clay like that there, it wouldn't, you couldn't grow grass and you had to do something well, with it. Well, you turned the pearn over onto it every time, every time. Uh, yeah. but, but they would do that and was, they would make ridges whenever they would be. That was the first thing they'd done, like, the, when they started to cultivate it. Right. They would put it just one, into ridges, you know. Right. And, the, you know, and that, that, was the, that was the beginning of it. They put farmyard manure in that? Uh, that's what they would do. They would put the sponge on the ridges. Uh -huh. You know, a ridge would be about the size of that mat of ours there. Right. And they'd put the sponge in that, there'd be four, four row spuds in it. Right, and then when the spuds would be dug off it, they would have... And they would dig it down again. Then and they'd they probably put spuds in it the next year again, as far as I can mind. And then after that, what would happen? With well, the then they would start to go out just the put corn or whatever. So it out in grass, mm -hmm. grass yes, on. same as it would the rest of their land. Well, the, the turf that they would cut, say, in this area, was that the main uh, cash crop? It was the main cash crop. And so some of them would, uh, most of them around here said to drop milk to bracky and cream, eh? And they get money for that as well? No, well, you would at the end of the month, right. you'd get that. Grass seed was a thing they got money for. Yeah. Grass seed was a good thing for them. And this land out around here was terrific. That cobalt that come from uh, 
Where lives he, Crow? Come down to Cambridge. And he said that the grass that he got from round here was the best grass he'd, he got in all his days. This is heavy land. Yes. The grass it was always good. Not always made them a good bit of money. Right. And then this year was flax. But not like for a bigger farm, but it only got in a small amount, you know, but still it made them ready money. They would get money for the flax as well. Oh wow. yes. They reckon that flax was very sore on the ground. Oh, that's what it was. Right. Mm. That's right. That flax was very, very sore on the ground. But took a lot out of it. You were saying there earlier on to him and that uh, this house and the house beside it here, that these were all thatched? No, I had all a row of thatched houses. Well, what would you thatch with? The thatch straw. with straw. Straw from the corn? Or? Yeah, I don't think we'll thatch a cup. Uh, uh, mostly I think that whenever they would have thatched, they would flail it with the flail, you know, we'll thatch it with the flail. Right. And then that kept it straight, you see. Right. My father was a terrific th thatcher. So they used the corn straw for thatching? They did. Hi. Not the corn on it now. No, no, no. They would no. cut, they would take the corn off it. it. See, it wasn't like thrashed with the thrasher. They thrashed with the flail and that didn't put the straw in the ship. Right. They kept it. It was easier managed. And tied up with wee bunches. Well, do you ever remember anybody putting a, a crop specifically for thatching? No, it was just ordinary corn. The ordinary straw. The ordinary no. straw. They didn't value the straw that much for feeding, did they? They didn't, no. Most of it no. was hay that it. And I tell you, they would have done turnips. And they went to the mill then with the corn, and there was a what they called grind down, they called it. We used to call it steering. Uh -huh. The corn would just be grind down the mill. Right. You'd get a certain amount of the corn for meal. Right. That was what you got for your supper was open, make porridge. Right. Well, I mean that, getting old porridge for my supper and for before you went out to school in the morning. And then just the whole corn was ground up then, and uh, that was fed to the cattle. Right. You used to make big pots of gruel. Right. You put on and boil it. And then you'd cut turnips or we used to have a kale cutter. You'd put over to the cows big buckets of this gruel and turnips or gruel and kale. Right. And when you went to milk after you give them every cow got a bucket of turnips and, and gruel. Well that, that uh, turnip cutter was it the blade of a side just that you used? No, no, no. Especially we had it we had it uh, uh, we had a turnip cutter. Well was that that is uh, special? Yeah, yeah. There was a thing on the side of it like that there with a whole lot of wee. And it'd be thicker than my thumb. There'd be teeth on it. Like a wee teeth on it. You'd turn it around and round. And it'd grind the turnips. Oh, why? Uh, and we had a kale cutter. With a thing for cutting kale for the pipes. Right. Right. Uh, it was like near like the blade of the side. There was right. two blades and there was like a trough. You put the kale in it and you twist it around. Do you see that? Do you see that over there? Uh-huh. You'd hardly see this side of it here. Well, I got that cut with a kale cutter. I was sitting on the handle and you see swinging myself round and round and the knife come down. I wonder what would be the thing that you call a musher? No, they call it the kale cutter. Maybe that was the right name, but they called it a kale cutter. You mentioned now that, that you had taken part in all of these jobs. Were the women work at that as well as the men? Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. I mean, the, that was the woman that milked the cows and it was the woman that fed the pigs and she bladed the kale. And she cut the turnips. And she'd work with the corn. Oh, definitely. Roddy Gormley's mother, Lizzie, and Kitty. That was Kitty McMahon's job, was slicing the turnips. Was they sliced them with the slicer. Right. And Roddy's mother, there, she was the greatest maker of bread in the whole college. And this is the other job, of course, the woman would be making. Oh, why they all had to make bread? Making bread as well. And boiling and spuds. I mean, that time there's no bread men going around. You oh, might no, get a look for Sunday. Yeah, no, no, no. And the woman would walk on the bog as well? Oh, yes. Oh. How long would you be in the bog now, there on an average, when, say, when you were young girls? Well, I mean, the most, the longest time ever I was in the bog it was filming the turf. It was 22 days. Three weeks. And then you'd spread them and wreck them. And then I went, there was a couple of people that were sick and that and went. And if you wouldn't be asked to go, well, you'd be raging. That'd be a real do crack, do you see? And down in our lower bog down there. That would be maybe seven or eight spades on that, and a big every girl would be on a bed, like every spade had a girl on it. That's right, there were oh, three yeah. on a spade. Aye, and every week your dinner brought out to you. Nelly would bring us to our dinner, and everybody else that was in the bog with the dinner. And how would how would they divide up now on the spade, what they called the spade? Daddy cut, and I followed it, whoever had wheel. Some of the Joan or someone of Some of them would swap round. And you start fairly early in the morning? Oh. 
I'll tell you that and there's a train going up there, we call it the nine train on Carmen Station. And the morning you went on Carmen at the on the bank at nine o'clock, you were very late. And when you had that done, there was a train going down a lot of the time at was it eight o'clock nearly? Uh, it was train down evening. And evening. That, that was your time for what and if there's a bit of a flu in the bank and bottom you had to finish it. A long day's work. Oh, oh, oh. and hard work. And they tell them now, but the many, many days in the bog were actually, when the corn started to be sewed out, to carry the corn to the fiddle. Right. And from that to the last party was done in October, or hardly been in the house. No. Well, carry the corn, then you cut sponge and dropped them and went to the bog, and then you thumb turnips and tied grasses and lopped hay. And that's right. Tied corn. Hay. Fork corn and gathered potatoes. The you mentioned the fiddle there in passing. Would there be one man in each locality had a fiddle, or was it? Farmer out there was the first man got a fiddle. And he fiddled for everything. Well, so no, right he to That's right, I remember. Well, so right to the white sheet. That's what I was telling them here about them. My father now was, he says himself, he was in the third class of school. Right. But uh, the men used to come here and they'd say to them, Johnny, have a piece of ground and a four packs of flex. Will you come and measure it for me? And, uh, he could go and he'd measure that piece of ground. I would step it. Step it and measure it. Right. And he'd take his sheet and sew it. And he wouldn't have one seat left and he wouldn't be a seat short. Mm -hmm. Now, could any of the young fellas do that now? They wouldn't. Those kind of skills don't yeah. exist anymore. <laughs> no. Well, he could do that. And I mean, like all the men around used to come to him and ask him how. And he could do it exactly. Yeah. Well, that is from, from having done it so often. Because that was it. There was no other way than and that. And as well as that, the, they knew the size of the fields, you see, uh, because they'd been, they'd been mm -hmm. harvesting for so long. Exactly. As in, they sewed it out of a sheet with uh -huh. his hand. And, and that was the thing, then, the woman would have with an awful nice white sheet. Oh, eh. Uh. You'd have with an awful nice white clean sheet to boot. Uh, and the men all sewed out the sheets to be very improved with the whitest sheet. They so would. The oh, eh. Uh. That was a great thing. It was all corn like, at that time. Oh, eh, uh, corn and grassy. Uh, yeah. They had to sew the grassy too, and the flats. And the hay was cut far later than the year than it is now. Oh, but the grass he was cut at the end of July. Uh huh. And then you'd be finished with it. It was cold enough there now to be hand sick and hay at the 15th of August. Well, oh, that'd be surely. That'd be surely. So it's a broken year, be later than that. How would they bring the handshakings into the haggard? Oh, they had a, they got a, they used to, oh, okay, love there had a hay cat. That's right, don't they? There's a prank on it. Ah, that's Get right. Get the length of it. Oh. And you'd leave it up for this. <laughs> But I seem to remember them taking them in and pulling them in with a chain. They just pull, uh, pull uh, them on, uh, on the road. That's right. Mm. That's if you were building it on the field that was on, do you see? Right. If you had to come on the road with that, you couldn't do that. Right. If you were well, putting the hay on the middle, you could draw it on like that with a chain. That's right. But how many of those handshakings would you put in a pig? Usually about 10. Ah, uh, 10 or 11. But there were some people you seen them with one for count. That's right. There was people who let on a jet wire over there. He used them and the, the stacks of corn, you see. Right. And uh, many you had. Many you had. You see, it wasn't how much corn you had, it was the amount of stacks you had. That's right. And and they would put about ten in each one. Ah, uh, ten was the usual now with the men about. Not eight. now for corn. Where was your? Uh, not for corn, no. no, no many no. lumps would you have in a stack of corn? I'd say five or six. Five now. You'd be very. Well, that'd be a quarter the size of the lump. That's right, uh, and, the, and the size of the sheaves too. That's so. Uh, sometimes the, the, the corn itself would be longer, sometimes it would be uh, short. Mm -hmm. well, you, the stooks wouldn't be that height, and then there'd be ones nearly there. Well, where was your hanger? Did you have a joint? There, behind there. There, round behind That's there. That's our hanger behind there. Well, well, the hay was up along like that. We used to stuff three or four pegs of hay up along there in a the row. And mm -hmm. then the corners on there behind the barn. Well, did each house here in Warrenstown have a hanger, or did they have a joint? No, 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 they had their own hanger. See hide. that? They have hay parties out of house. Yes. That was their hanging. That's right. what And down there, where that hay sheet is now, that was right. the That's the corn was. Right. That was the years. The farmer, he usually had the hay in that one. Uh, he would leave it in the middle. Ah, uh, and down at the fall there, down at the foot of the wind. He'd build the pigs there? Ah. Uh, right. That's right. Well, was there some specific person for building in each family, or would they, would they combine there? No. no it, my father was not the farmer, my niece's father was never a good field builder, of course. John was a good builder. John could build. But Mickey wasn't a good builder. But the three families or four or five families would be they would join for that kind of a 
Oh, they're joined at the work, sure. Oh, well, would surely. It would be cutting corn and getting sponsors to be three or four families. One together. man would be good at building and somebody else would be good at forking. Yeah, uh -huh. that's it. God, that was tiny. You know, the people were poor that him and they hadn't very much of this world's good, but they were a far happier race of people. No, oh, they were happy only, they were happy in the work they were They were content. indeed. And they took a great pride. I seen my father, and if he seen us talk corn growing on the ditch, he would tell us, don't go in there to lift that, you see if those thistles or anything. Right. Right. He'd go and take off his cap and pull them out, you see that, that had been, and making rows of stooks. You'd have a nice straight row of stooks right. along the road. Like and you had to gather the heads of oh, the feet. Oh, look. I had a row of stooks would have to be a street. That's right. Mm -hmm. And the laps, even when they were lapping. Oh, yes. You see, you yeah. see them uh, cutting the silage there now, half the silage is blowing all over the field, nobody worries a thing about it. Oh. But when they and there was most of now, and sure I made that, and when they used to go to cut corn, the, ha the men went and opened it with a scythe. Oh, yeah. You wouldn't have do now the step and look at it. Oh, drive away. Drive it. No, there's none of that now. They weren't a bit worried about it. I'll tell you, another thing used to be done to them. Daddy would nearly be the first one to go to the mill. We joined, the farmer had an engine at a time, and now I don't mind everyone having to thrash the corn with a blade. But the farmer had an engine up there in the barn. It's, it's not there now, is it? No, the fans no. are there, I think. Oh, so the and uh, Daddy would always go first to the mill, or whoever went first. If we didn't go, but as soon as you come to the mill, everybody got a bucket of milk. He made. And Daddy would always give the coils one and the larry's ones. Yeah. And if they were people that hadn't much, and you go in your chair with them. That's it for porridge. Aye, sure. That's right. Lord, that smell of that porridge, but I can mind it. Uh -huh. Would think there's never come back to get her at it. There would never have been much corn in your day. No, no there was. I remember walking at the corn and uh, cutting it with a scythe and uh, lifting it and stooping it and mm -hmm. opening it all and stacking it. And I remember the binder, of course. In fact, I saw a binder cutting just even before yesterday, didn't I? Well, the corn. Corn. Why corn? Corn. Corn. You feel a corn down now beside James Kerr. Sure, we don't like it. Well, now he has it cut. It, he might have put it in, you see, to clean up a field too. Aye. And he has, he has a lot of grass. He must have sown grass, grass seed along with it. Oh, aye, the grass seed had to be sown along with the corn. That's right. But now, when you'd have the haggard, when you'd have all the, the, the pigs and the corn stack, when you'd have them all in, how long would you leave them before they'd be thatched? Oh, well, you leave them immediately. immediately. Would you? And you had to twist the ropes. There used to be another up there in our car house. That's where they sat there, and they would go with the straw, the nice long straw you see in the easier straw. And we'd go down there, and we'd have a chair, and you put the rope on through the top of the chair. And you twist away. Twist away, and went on down there. That's right. There might be a second chair even pulled, and it was going to be oh, very long. Oh, yeah. But would you not? Can you? Did you not put up the pegs and the stacks, and you put a light rope over them at the start? Oh no, no. Whenever you put on the pegs and the word, they, they were. You had a, you rope them right round like that, and then they put cross ropes on them. And then when they would sink down a little, them ropes was tightened, and they put another cross rope on them. But I thought they didn't fax them immediately. Well, they didn't. Well, if the weather was looking to be wet, if it was like good, oh, yeah. good, real good weather, they wouldn't be in a hurry, but if the weather was wet, they would mm -hmm. And my father used to grind whenever he did the corn stacks, they would call that up like that, you know. That's right. Across like that. Right. That was that easing. That's right. And he used to grind with a knife. That's right. And even that round. I, uh, they I used normally need to cut it round with a knife. They used to have, uh, uh, some of them would clip them with hedge clippers. Uh, no, my father used to kill pigs, he had a butcher knife. Uh -huh. <laughs> and they would poke them in to, to make sure they had oh, their... Oh, wow. Yes, that's right. I, I was telling you the story about John Dunhey, Mock the Lane, and there was a particular man on that lane, and he was very fond of putting in props. Yes. You weren't good at building your snack, you see. Ah, uh, you have to prop it up the lane. Props, that's right. And John was going up to the end of the lane, and this man, uh, met him and he says, what way did you come? Did you come up past the drum man or forest? <laughs> he was referring to the, this particular all the man. Snakes. All the props that he had to his back. <laughs> but then the same thing applied to getting getting at the uh, level, you know, coming into a nice point for the horn yeah, yes. mm -hmm. and, and for thatching it again, that was quite a skill as well, wasn't it? Oh, it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, I tell me the fiddle. Ah, tell that story. Yeah. There's a, a music session in this house, you know. But come on a very wet, windy night. And this fellow went home with his fiddle. He just couldn't go any further. And he went into this house. And there was like two spunts in it, like ourselves. <laughs> 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 and then, then he got knocked the door. 
Well, you know, she couldn't get in here to stay the night. She's the priest here, us two girls keeping a man. But he insisted, well, she says, if you have to stay, make yourself useful. And she went out and got a whop of hay. Now she says, he's a trap and you'll toss this rope. She says, the hay might be blown away. Yes. So uh, she set the fire and let out the hay. And uh, when you got the length of the door with the rope, she banged the door over it. No. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy they settled and played this tune, and that's what he called it. The girl was too smart for the fiddle. That's a good story. It's a good way of getting them out. Well, that's not an idea. She didn't want the rope. There just she got them out very handy this way. The spuds they would be pitted in the fields too. Oh my! Oh, and what would you cover them with? Rushes. Daddy used to, he would put brushes on the floor of the lawn and they had to have to be gathered up as nice to make a wee crack in the ground for it. And then they would put... And you just hit them like that. Right. And my money's father was very particular, he'd say, top them to the Top them to the day. Yes. There's no loose ones lying about. <laughs> and uh, uh, Daddy would put brushes on them and then he put clay on them. And then he put more rushes and more clay, that is to give out the frost. Right. He put the, the clay, rushes on and then clay. Uh, yes. and then, then more rushes and more clay. More clay. Uh-huh. And that would keep them perfectly dry. That would keep uh, them perfectly dry. Well, they, they wouldn't open them in during bad frost in the winter time. Oh, no, no, oh, no. no. But there, there was but a glass always, or anything coming, they would always take them They were always wise, they would always have spuds in, you know. Right. And, and corn and that. Frost or snow coming, they'd take in a load of potatoes and have them. Daddy, she would put on a stack of corn, I think there's going to be a storm. That's right. They'd be, they'd be stocking up always if there was a storm oh, coming. Oh, there was. But you were talking about the thrash in there, did they not thrash on the barn loft? They did. Well, I don't mind them thrashing much on our barn loft. But they're not thrash with a flail or something? They thrash the thrash. They thrash the flail, That's how a lot of people had a thrash. I mean, one of them was... <laughs> The gym wall, but there was a bar, the bands and, and the, the colleagues was going to have a lot with Arthur McAnally's ones. But Jim Ward and Mickey Tammy was thrashing at Jeff Ward with two flames. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be called as witnesses to us, they were there and seen the round. Yes. But Mickey Tammy just thought he says very old fashioned down to tell that we're thrashing with that flame. Oh, he says we just couldn't say we're thrashing in that district. <laughs> 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 but the the um the when the, when the thrashing when the corn and all will be finished, they would uh, they would have a dance then on the barn loft. The night the, the, the night the corn will be finished cutting. They call that the churn. Yes. The night a lot of people would have a dance that night. Uh huh. The churn. And there'll be different ones then in different houses. Oh why? Oh, why should I? House would have a dance well, how do you use dances here? Eh? I'd use good oh, dances. I mean, dance. That'd be a, a, a dance like our barn, and, and there's like there's a good floor in the matter, mm -hmm. and uh, there'd always be a dance to a flax pump mm -hmm. or some sort of flax spread. Right. Well, that'd be a great thing, flax pump dances. Mm -hmm. I hear kids here, Uncle Paddy's wife there, or oh, Kyle's barn, and Davy Kyle's, so all like the people all mixed that in, there's no difference. Like, right, right. Everybody went. Who was the main musicians at them? Oh, there'd just be a couple of fellows who played accordion, maybe an old fellow with a fiddle. Barney Allen was a great man for the... McCallum. Uh, Barney McCallum. He knows a thing as a band, that isn't it? Just oh, a no. couple of fellows playing. You'd go to a dance and some fellow from the wood, you know, they... That was it, now. And, and if the, the accordion player wasn't there, maybe somebody would look for the dancer. <laughs> no, i never seen that, now. Did you not? No. But, uh, well, it's me some of them. A lot of the fellas about there and get up and look. Paddy Mullen down there could play my own, you know. Uh, Maggie Keenan's brother. Yeah, father was a good man for playing. And uh, Peter Corley, they knocked the Pat Corley, and Peter's right. there, you know. Uh -huh. Pat, Pat Keenan was a good melodian player, God of Mercy. Well, was any charge into these dancers or No, no, oh, no, you'd have to be asked. The girls would be asked, and then whatever men went, just that was it. And they'd all get tea. These were the house dancers. Then with oh, the, uh, the house dance. They'll take them to the room for tea, isn't that right? That's right. That's right. He made the, what do you call him? Call the rest of the dead. I don't understand. Right. He used to be playing music and he wouldn't be in great form. Then if he took the room for tea and then he'd come into the kitchen. Did you see a night man like that? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> if, if there was a, the, the word of music out, like if there's going to be a music session, he would arrive at the house, you know. Oh, wow. I saw him do this myself and he had a big, big black coat on him. And he would be sitting there 
And if anybody mentioned music, you'd open up this coat and you'd pull out a fiddle and a bow out of the inside pocket. <laughs> <laughs> No humour to the people now. No, but you were talking there about the uh, about the, the stacks of corn and boys trying to have more stacks of corn. Aye, that's almost a goal. But it was the same with the pits of spuds. Oh, they were, I had it too. They'd be trying to give the impression that they had a lot of potatoes in the yeah. field. Peter Maguire, the postman, was an awful wit. And he would be um, himself and the Doherty's would be slagging off. Oh, yeah. my God. So the Doherty's there at the bridge, you know, I'm making Johnny Doherty. Right. They had a field of spuds in. And they had a particularly good yield that year and they had a lot of pits of spuds on the field. So they are waiting for Maguire to come and uh, they more or less stopped him on the side of the road. And said, there's, the pits. there's a great field of pits. Pete there was lying across the, the hobbit was lying across the handlebars of the bait in the bar and he looked up and down the field. Tell us this, Johnny, he says, what ones have you the pretties in? <laughs> <laughs> I just remember them vaguely, but I remember they, they always tried to keep themselves young. Mm -hmm. And uh, like Mickey would need a stick to walk them, but they always had a pitchfork with a shaft to be that height and you see it. He, when you'd go along with Dan, you'd think he was walking. Right. He wouldn't always walk with a stick. Uh -huh. You'd think he was doing something with a pitchfork. They'd be waiting on Maguire every day, Maguire would be going past. You'd see Maguire's a postman, he would have the news. Mm -hmm. I, and, and Jack Ward, he used to tell about Pat Law, and he was one of the boys that wanted the count for the sport of the. Stacks. Well, stacks of corn. Mm. And, uh, he told me, Christ, he says, you'd be far from the way, he says, and if you turn around, he says, you'd look back, he says, at the stack of corn gets you. Uh -huh. Just as when you turn around, he says, end the stack of corn, you know. Oh, he top on it at the top. Oh, no, he just top on it. on it. But Peter Maguire was, he was doing the post down in Craigan, and there was a house that was particularly bad down in Craigan, and in those days the house was condemned. <laughs> And this was a new word people hadn't heard of a house being condemned. It had never been heard in the district before, but Doherty's was out waiting on Peter to, to come home. To come he what news was. So they took Peter in to hear this whole story of this house in Craigan. How bad was it now, Peter? And Peter looked all around Doherty's. Well, he says, you think this house is dirty? <laughs> 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 well, it was nothing to that house. <laughs> you mean Paddy Anthony's wife, huh? Yes. But Peter was on the post, but she took Peter on this day and was giving him ten. She had a terrible lot of kinds of bread. But Peter, she says, do you have much of a selection as an egg at the bin? He hoped rock. I said, sir, pick as much out of it as you do it like a home. He'd pick the cleanest of it. Oh, God, he was terrible. God, he was wide, wasn't he? He had a sharp tongue, but he was... But he was very quick. He was. My mind was going to Mass on a holiday morning. And... I was many up there. We met Peter, he was uh, he had a kind of relapse wanted him to go to the chapel. He was, didn't go, but he was coming over here to Grogan's place. And uh, she says, Peter, you're going the wrong road now. And many told out why like that, you know. Mm. He looked down there. Do you know, many says, well, your feet's going, you wouldn't know what direction you're going. Uh huh. Well, you wouldn't need to come to. I wish you were not pulling the shore out of the <laughs> You wouldn't need to come to quick enough, I think. She's made it. Turn about it. Meeting Mrs. Locke on the day that uh, she lived back to the house, she lived with the devil was married. That's right. And she said, uh, Did you see the big wedding? I thought I was sure, but she's married now, Blacksmith. <laughs> 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 and I'm married. I'm making love with Mrs. Locke on the night, Blacksmith. Of course, boys, it could cut you off at the home. I could indeed. Oh. But uh, travelling, you're talking about walking to the chapel there. Uh, like, how far is it from here to Kearney Moor now? Three miles. Three Just miles. to cost one hour. Walk onto the it took yes. one hour to walk from here to the chapel. And you'd be up early in the morning on the way? Yes, 8 o'clock. We well, left here, we, we always went to 9 o'clock mass. And in them days you didn't get Holy Communion only at the first mass. That's right. You had to go to first mass the Sunday you go to Holy Communion. Fasting? Yes. But you know that was the, that was the only place women ever got. That's right. The they, met, they met over the chapel. And who about the neighbours they would be going along with? Well, see we were out there with money or the people around about, we we'll all be together to go to the chapel. But you were fasting from 12 o'clock the night before? Yes. Yeah. Oh, we used to be warned to be washing our face, not swallowing any of the water. Mm hmm I mean, those on Christmas morning, but that time, Mass would be at 7 o'clock. Yes. The people would be all walking, you'd hear the tramp of their feet out on the other road, walking, big rows of people, like everybody was walking. Then there was a nice 
You men do it all to the chapel. Oh, they sure. The brown one. No, I don't. The brown wouldn't after this, because them gone was done to script very handy craft work done on it. And that would be, a, I'm sure there'd be a hundred candles lighted on it. But the all the was, you see. It would be all decorated with holly and egg, and the lights of them candles were just beautiful. No electric light or anything would make it as nice as that. It was just lovely. It would be nice. And oh, uh, sure. the women all had candles in the window. And Mrs. Rafferty. And the houses coming down the uh, building. Uh, Mrs. Rafferty and Mrs. Gallagher, they had three candles in every window. The rest of the reformed candle and every one day. That's an old Christmas yeah. custom. It was. You'd mm -hmm. be going up the town there, but just lovely to see all the candles in the one day. Well, then you, uh, there, would, there would be no hurry back, would there? You'd, you'd... Oh, no, the chap can go to the graveyard. And that is when you did the country, you go on over the country, you'd be chatting to her, and she'd tell you what was going on there, and you'd tell her what was going on in our country. Well, you wouldn't eat anything then until you'd come back? Oh, no, not at all. You'd be fasting in other words until you come back here? No. Yes. I mean, no, maybe three hours away, you'd leave here at eight o'clock, and we'll always keep an hour in the chapel at it. You wouldn't be home till eleven. You'd wait three hours. You'd be fairly ready for your breakfast when you oh, go home. I'm telling you, you would. But see, that was the way that you didn't think of things, you know. And then if there were devotions in the evening again, you went back again? Yes. And you went to the October devotions as well? We did. We went to the October devotions where we walked. You'd come out of the pretty field as a rule that day. And you'd wipe your shoes and all, and you'd go to the October devotions, and you made ten. You had to make ten devotions, ten visits to the chapel. That's right. And if you, when that was done then, you went there to confession for you. But again, there'll be a crowd of people walking. Oh, I really thought it was walking. Very few people at the basic. I mean, the coils down there. You know where the Brannigan's house is down yes. there? You know, Mickey the Butcher there. Yes. Well, they always went with our ones. And they used to come up in the evening and they would say, I want to know if there's any use. They always called it the rosary. Mm -hmm. Any use called it the rosary. And then they'd go gang them out. Did you see them now walking? There wouldn't be too many fit to walk the car anymore now. <laughs> As the car wasn't, of course there was. But I mean, in our day, the thing is, for God's sake, is the change, isn't it? This, it's That's tremendous. Oh, you couldn't imagine it. What about the horses and traps? I mean, that. Aye, there was. But you ain't had a trap. The kid, the yank, they have a big fat sliver now, she had a trap. But it, the wars here not have a trap. Aye, we had a trap. Because, see, up there now, we always put that the car house. Right, one of these sheds at the same. The farmer hung out a trap also. Aye. The farmers wanted to die. That's the way money keeps the car now. That's what he kept the trap. And how many would the trap take? I think four. Four. You see, there was look. different kinds. and There was ones like with the, uh, the seat in the front and the seat in the back. Right. And then there was one to call the side cars. There was two so You'd be facing outwards. And then there'd be a place in the front you call the dicky for the man that drove the horse. Oh. Uncle, the Huey had a, Uncle Huey had a post car. They called him a post car. Right. And he would These be such... bigger, he could take six. That's what it'd be at weddings, do you say? No, Except well, three at each side. Right. Wouldn't there have been here in there? There was a seat up the middle, wasn't there? Hey. there was no, a... no, I never know. That's a side car, was it? Hey. There was a seat up the middle. And then you sat facing out. Two people sat facing uh, out. Uh, but there was only the two to the side, and there was no middle one. Right. And the place in the front you called the dicky. The right. driver sat on the dicky. Right. And drove the horse. Well, it'd take a good horse like to take five or six people, wouldn't it? Oh, good, surely. Would they have to walk the hills there? Would they, would that's what was at weddings in them days. Well, would that be the same horse as on the farm? Never seen them before. Yeah, that's right. No, well, there'd be men. There'd be men. There have... was the dicky of Uncle Huey's post car. There was? Yes. That's what he sat on? He sat on that. And he had, he had, he had, he had a seat on his head? He had a seat on that, and he sat on that. And he sat on the front and drove the horses, right. and then the people who come, there was a row down there and a row down there. And then yes. he got that, and we keep it kind of together with nails. That's oh, very, very good to have it. Well, that's it. Oh, that'd be queer now. That's right. Well, if you had one of those traps now, or one of those sidecars would be very valuable. Aye. Uh -huh. But there would be none in the country. Well, now, where did they stable the horses then, and carry more? Well, you see, the people... Oh, the, those... Uh, uh, Paddy Queen had stables and uh, the other side there, the right. house belonged to him, there was different people lived in it. Right. Eddie Scott lived in it. Right. And then there was a man named Campbell, two different Campbells lived in it. Right, Paddy Campbell? Aye. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Paddy Campbell that lived in Ochnadry, he... That's right. He had a yard. He had a yard there. That's it, the body that had the pub. And he had a pub in Carrie's That's right. And the son of priest, isn't it? I thought Paddy Campbell was in I've seen his ordination in the paper. Well, would you have to pay for the stable Would you have to pay for the stable On a fair day you paid. Not on a Sunday, but on a, a fair day, a man had done his horse and cart, he had to pay sixpence. Well, I remember on a fair day, Jack Ward, Joe McMahon, and people that got there, they came and left their horses and their carts down at our I, house. I'm happy oh, to see it paid for the horses, you see. Now, when you see there were neighbours. Aye, aye, aye that's, that's right. They would know the right enough to. Oh, well, you had, and then when the cattle were through the yard, they had to pay, I think it was three pence each for an animal. Mm-hmm. That's, and that's where the sales yard is there now, isn't it? Aye. Well, the sales yard is now. That's right. That's right. And the, there's a yard down at Minas, a big box is now. Right. A cheetah yard for cattle. Down at Minas? Yes. And a yard for horses. You paid sixpence for your horse when you were there in the fair. And the pigs were kept, was they were sold in carts there, aren't they? Yes. Along there, just been in front of properties and on camels. front of camels. There'd be a row of carts there. There'd be a row of carts there. Facing out. And then men that were going to buy, they'd go around all the carts to see. And they covered it with a big rope. Well, the fair day itself was a big occasion, wasn't it? Oh, Lord. It was high and fair. Uh, when was it? That was on the, high, the 19th, was on the 19th of, and the... Uh, 19th of November and the 19th of May was a high and fair to Six Mile Cross. And you, if you're going out to a hire, you have to hire for six months. Well, when was the hiring fair? Was there a hiring fair in Carrick Moor? No. Uh, there no. Was, but some had never developed much of the chairman. Mm-hmm. Same like the chairman last Friday in May and the last Friday in November. But that was as big as Six Mile Cross. Uh-huh. Six Mile Cross was a very big hired thing. Right. And then the 12th of, the Saturday news, the 12th of November, was the higher market in Oma. Right, right. Well, as well as the, the people that would be hiring fellows to work, like, for ordinary people who had no business to do, it was an occasion to be out. No, oh, right. everybody went to the high end a lot of things like shooting galleries, you know, and all things like that on the high end. Thing. And people uh-huh. singing on the street, you know, swinging and, boats and men that. singing and selling ballads and mm. things like that. So it was a bit of occasion, almost like a, hey. it was like a sports day there. Oh, surely. We used to still go to the high end fair. Everybody would go to the high end fair. Young people and everything. Everybody, everybody young people went. all went to the high end fair. And the stalls would all be along the streets oh, as well. Oh, the stalls all along the, the street. Maybe. Selling apples and oranges and fruit and old boys going round singing and begging pennies. Mm. <laughs> and, and like, what about the cattle? Eh? The cattle would have to do. You have to drive the cattle to the fair. The cattle would be along the sides of the street too. I remember the horses that would walk the horses or run the horses up and down the street. Uh, that's right. And there was much horses that went them and Carmel. Bully Golly was it? Bully Golly in the moor. The boy was the favourite horse fair. And Balaboli was next. And the rock. I mean, the long fellow down there moved the rock to the horse fair. But what about the cross? Was there another horse fair? No, there might be, but not so much. No, no. It's just that there's a part in it called the horse fair, like. Ah, that's what the the place was. It might have been like back in an earlier time. It might have been a a place for the. But you were talking earlier there about Christmas. How did Christmas differ in your early days to now? Would there be such a thing as turkey for the Christmas dinner? No, very Not seldom. so much now. Well off people, see, turkeys were more expensive than geese, and most people had a goose. goose. We always had a goose. A, a goose. Like, I mind, like, when a, a tur- you'd get a shilling a pound for a turkey, you might only get four pounds a pound for geese. So, so most people, like, like, a lot of people would have their own geese and turkeys, but the turkey would be too expensive to keep. And the turkeys would be, the turkeys would be sold, and the geese would be kept. Now we used to, and Daddy used to always make us our share of Mother Day when Nelly was born. And Daddy used to make us always our dinner. And he'd always have roast and he'd always have a goose. Mm-hmm. He made it our dinner. We always got a piece of roast meat and a roast goose Christmas time. We always had to go down to the room and a big fire pleasing in the room. Well, I think as well as that, you see, that the, 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 the goose was more traditional. It was. Oh, the roast goose was still traditional. The turkeys haven't been introduced that, that terribly long here, have they? No. They haven't, no. no. And was there such a thing as Santa? No, very seldom. We never, we never could tell a Santa in our day. Well, Daddy the, used to buy every one of them. We never had Santa. Well, let the dog in. Oh, never, I'm sure. Like. We never had Santa. Oh, lazy. Had you Santa fed? Oh, yes. He hadn't. Well, one man is a labrador, an expensive job. No, I know, but he's got 
Oh, well, we would get toys now, but not Santa. Mm. Daddy right? used to sort of buy Daddy. everyone one of Christmas stuff. Mm. As it, there was no, no word of no, Santa no. at all nowadays. Santa was never mentioned nowadays. But Christmas Day used to be a great day and a great time at Christmas. I think the people enjoyed it better. They did. Because they didn't get much that in, you see. They got very few, like they never got much of a, a variety of food in that. And then when you got the different kind of food, oh, you would be looking forward to it and all that. Well, like the people said, like the man said, every day is Christmas now. Oh, this is it. I mean, us, do you know the part Terry, John Mum's aunt? That's right. Out? Well, I mind us being in it. I went down to John Mons at one night, to tease him on me, and we were talking about that. It was the month of November. And Ellen said to me, she said, I didn't get beef since Christmas Day. That was the month of November. Well, no. That's <laughs> it. Mm. Keep the name days, they didn't. I suppose they couldn't afford it, really. No, well, what were they eating? Were they, were they, were they eating bacon the... principally for the dinner. Oh. And American bacon was a lot cheaper than. Irish bacon, and there was very few people bought Irish bacon. And they would be killing it on pig of their own and then salting it? They would die uh, sometimes, but not a lot of men who could afford it. Not many who could afford it. But I'm the, the, the American bacon was far nicer bacon than Irish bacon. That was very salty. That's right. It was the salt of the pigs, you see, then. Uh -huh. And, and uh, sometimes there would be maybe two or three of them, and they would salt a pig. Uh -huh. And divide it. They would join in it. No? Join in it. What school did you go to? We went to Mullisland. Yeah. Mullisland School. That is far to go from here. Uh -huh. About a mile. About a mile and a half or so. About a mile and a half, I'd say, to Mullisland School. Who was the teachers in it? Master Connor was now and Miss O'Brien. And Miss Marshall was there first. Is it was the school that new now? It is it? No. Well, there's a man has a butt. A man called Patrick Conway living in now. Was school a very pleasant place then? No, it was not. Oh, no, 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 no. You, didn't, you didn't, didn't like the idea of going to school a bit? Well, didn't because that time you were. God bless us, it was. I don't know now, it was. He was very severe. He was very severe, and I tell you, you get away, you got away with nothing. Oh, God. Thank you, mm -hmm. I forgot I would give. I'm an old Eh? No. I mean, if you were slapped at school, whether it was in the wrong or right, or if you thought it was the wrong, wouldn't it have been so many dares you would have got it? What did you think of it? You wouldn't tell when you'd move if you were slapped. One school you... I'll tell you now, then. There's not a thing ever learned me, but I know it yet. I bet you did. Oh, God, he was good. He was a good teacher. He was, you believe. He was, and, you? and then you case and you got it very elaborate, too. You know, you got a good cross-section, didn't you? We did. We did. And I tell you, I think with Master Conway, he was awful generous. You know when we used to change the class at the 1st of July? Well, Master Conway bought the books himself. He did. And he went round the class. He never said, give you the money. If you brought can the you money, pay it was all right. And if you didn't, no. it was all right. It was good like that. It was good like that. Well, the books, of course, were kept in school, weren't they? Oh, I, no, you took your books home with you. What did you? Well, I got home to school and I did two hours doing your homework. <laughs> and there'd have been no school dinners that time, had there? Oh, you need a piece of bread and you buy you that or something. If you're hungry, you would eat the board. <laughs> no, there's no talk shop. I made it box, but we used to smoke. There was five of us smoked. Oh, that was in the later days when I was school. Just before we left. There's five of us that that Mary McCrystal and, and Michael Coleman. I didn't think girls would have smoked that. And you get, oh, we did. You got uh, five wood bins for two pence. So four of us would have four hit me started. And then the other one, who would want to marry foxes and buy them and put the jaw and and didn't get a free one. Right. Well, like that would be the five cigarettes. That's we didn't think Carol's would have smoked. Eh? Oh, they didn't. Well, we didn't when we were at school. Yeah, yes. But so. for a long number of years then, we didn't smoke when I was out. Well, Daddy never said anything to us for smoking. No. Some of the old women smoked the pipe. I did, sure. I might have been sent up down my killing up there, John O'Glear's mother. And Daddy used to kill it with her. And she always smoked the pipe. And she that thing would pass the pipe round, you see. Right. Same as you just pass round the fags now. Right. Well, they pass the pipe round. But that was nothing to Mary give him that pipe. Right. And, and he forgot to give it a little and he stick it in his pocket. Uh -huh. And I mind making me rise up early in the morning to go up and give Mary a pipe if she be wanting to smoke. Right. Why, well, Mammy smoked it here, didn't it? And spit. It would spit as well, not that maybe the women wouldn't spit. No. 
Daddy used to light the pipe and then there'd always be killer that. That's right. And the pipe, everybody would take a pull of the pipe. There was a man in our town on that he smoked, and he was a terrible man to spit. And he'd even, he'd, he'd, he'd sit in the short aisle there in the chapel on Sunday, and he'd, he'd leave his cap over there and he'd spit until his cap. Oh, I'd put his head in the door. But he had this protector house this night, and he was spitting on the floor, and the woman was fairly protecting her, and she got an oil bucket, and she left the bucket down. And he spat over here beside it, and she moved the bucket a second time, she put the bucket over where he was spitting, and he started spitting over here in the first place again. Yes. She moved the bucket back over to this place. He says to her, hey, missus, he says, if you don't move that bucket, I'll spit in it. <laughs> but the woman didn't spit. No, no, the woman wouldn't spit when there's no. Well, no. the wooden you just don't lift it. Not to me. That used to be a custom at wakes, do you mind? They yes. used to get the white pipes. That's right. right. They're all the smoke. Everybody was supposed to get. You're supposed to get pull of the pipe. Well, I mean, not doing it. Everybody was supposed to. Well, the teacher wouldn't have knew you were smoking a school, would eh? it? Oh, for God's sake, you'd be killed if you were found out smoking. He didn't smoke, no. Eh? He, he, didn't. Didn't. he didn't. He didn't. Did he? But he, he never smoked in school. I don't even mind the smoke. No, I don't either. No, 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 me either. But he smoked previously. Heavy no, Mrs. Brown never smoked. Oh, no, she, she wouldn't smoke. No, Mrs. Brown didn't smoke. Miss Marshall, when we went to school first, you know, the Marshalls. Yes. Me. Rose Marshall taught. But before I went to school, Kit Lawhorn. Taught in the school. That's right, Pat Lawrence. Aye, she taught me that. Mickey McGurk, the, the blacksmith in Garrick Moore, he smoked a wee dude, you know, for paper wee. The one that I went up with me, it wasn't that length, it was broke, you see. That's right, he, 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 he would be smoking all the time. That'd be interesting. There'd hardly be any, anything left in it, you know. Yeah. But there was a. a call that a cutty pipe. That's right. There was a doctor there operated where. The what it told had the Sunnyside restaurant. And he was a great man to smoke and he came up one morning and he forgot his pipe. Uh, so he decided to go over and he'd ask Mickey McGork for the run of his pipe. Oh. So Mickey McGork was a blacksmith, you know, and uh, maybe a, a tobacco speckle coming down here. <laughs> and Dr. Hunter got the pipe. Uh, and he pulled out a big white handkerchief and he went round with this and he talked away and Mickey talked away and hammered away on the anvil and he cleaned it and he would examine it and he would give it another Another room. And he took a real good smoke out of Mickey's pipe. But he wiped it out. Ma he wiped it with, with the handkerchief. So Mickey never said anything. But when Hunter was uh, finished smoking, he handed the pipe back to Mickey McGork. And Mickey McGork got the, the end of the pipe that he got there and he came down with, with his hammer and he knocked the end of it, his pipe and he put it back in his mouth again. <laughs> <laughs> Not <laughs> <laughs> let them see the way of it. He didn't bother with the handkerchief, he did the easy way. <laughs> well, what about the big snow of 47? Was it bothering right this part of the country? It was. I made 47 well. Yeah. That was way snow that I That was a terrible thing. How long did that last? Oh, for well, I, I, I went away, it come three times. It come first on the 22nd of February, on a Tuesday evening. And then. I sort of the way and I come back the next Wednesday. Well, was the ground, had the ground been dry? Had there been frost or anything before it? Well, it was six it was weeks, black frost, frost for six weeks before it. What oh, but it was a cold weather. A cold wind from the east. And it, it blew dry for that six weeks. And I mean, it started on a Tuesday evening. And uh, my party told God Resident here with, with Joe Fox's lorry and they couldn't get off the bray, they had to go up the road again. They had. I was sort of going away, they, they read the roads already, you see, the traffic sort of go, but uh, come back again the next Wednesday. I stayed there again, and I come back then, I wouldn't say, but it was a right fall on the 15th of March. Then it was starting to go away on the 17th of March. Oh. Had to go through the fields and everything, leave them on the top of the snow. Well, what way did you manage? Well, at that time, everything was rationed. Right. Either ration books with Joe Fox, you couldn't, but uh, <coughs> there was for six weeks Joe Fox, he used to come round here every two weeks, right. and he'd leave our grocers up on Kelly's, we'd have got the fees to. Right. Well, there was a couple of Sundays didn't get out to Mass. 
That would be very that would never have happened since, would it? No, no, no. Never just so strong with that since. It was well, a pretty bad one then it is. Nineteen sixty three years. Aye, but there was a bad one there, do you remember the Sunday that Father Tracy didn't get the Craig in a few years ago there? Aye. Aye we didn't well, get out that Sunday either. Like that the only one went from about a year. Well, you talked about clearing the roads. What way was the clear the roads in? Shovels. The men went out of the shovels, the spades, no, in the brush. And of course, there'll be no traffic on the road like now. There'll be no lorries or cars. No, very little. But those tractors on the road, Adam, you see, there's the old tractors going around, Adam. Well, could the tractor make it? Uh, well, the tractor would be, uh, be a very good thing for, like, levelling it down, you know. Uh-huh. Wasn't too bad, now. It was a terrible storm, that. Oh, it was. Uh, what about spuds and that out of the pits? How did you manage that? Well, a lot of spuds was pleased. A lot of spuds went to Lois. The, the, the side of the pit next to East One were all bad. East One? You see, that's why Daddy would put the... The, the extra in Russia. Yeah, the... the well, we had a lot of ones lost. A lot of people had. If you open the pit at all, then the whole pit... Oh, that was it. That's right. See, if the... Frost had to come after the snow, the snow would have saved them. They should have come this hard frost. Frost Just a bare, hard frost. Yeah, black it, hard frost. It went into the, into the ground. Mm -hmm. But you know black frost, it just dries everything up and they get them. Well, there's a lot of spots lost that year. Uh -huh. Well then, what about making bread? At least you'd have the ability to make bread then. It wouldn't mean that you wouldn't be depending on the bread men. Oh, no, not at all. Joe Fox used to call it that. Old PJ Fox from down here, we get one loaf maybe in the week. If there's somebody coming on Sunday, he might get a loaf on Saturday. And you call that the shop bread? Yes. Uh, but white bread. White it's bread. White bread, they call it. Daddy always referred to loaf bread as white bread. Uh -huh. And he hated it. Oh, if you give Daddy white loaf bread twice after already, he'd be sick of it. Well, was it all homemade bread then the rest of the time? Oh, yes, all of course, the time. all the time. Then we used to make, we used to make oak bread. No, on the griddle. On the griddle of the fire. Up to the fire. What about pretty pudding? Did you smack that? Oh, we did, pudding? yes. Still make it? No, we don't make it now. There's nobody on the other two of us who don't make it. No, you can't do it very well on here either. Well, there's some people can. Some people, no, we never did make it on there. We used to have, uh, we, ha we made it in the pot. The pot that we made the porridge in. And the sponge was peeled the night before. And they're mashed up with flour and salt. And then you'd put them on the, we had a breadboard. And you'd put them in that, and then it was covered mostly with a white pork. And, and it was left, there, it left sitting there till the next morning. And when there's a good fire on, then you put on your pudding. And... Did you put any spice on it? No, no such a thing as no spice. Thing spice. No, not a no. Thing we, no, no spice. No. Onions? No, 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 no. nothing. Oatmeal, nothing like that. No, 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 nothing no. in it, only the potatoes and the flour and the salt. And that was put on then, and you put on your pot on, and uh, whenever you got it hot, really hot, there was three brick at the side of the fire, and three or four coals on it, that kept it just a kind of bubbling. Right. And until it turned brown, it would be dark. Take it at least six hours to cook. And kept the coals on the top of the lid. Right. right. That's the way you made the bread. I know, but I'll have, have to, to, I'll have to get you some pretty pudding now next year. Hey, well, you better. Do you right. make it? Oh, eh. Mrs. Farr used to send it down to us, and uh, Tizia Bracco was great at it. Mm -hmm. But she, said, she always put spice in it. Right. And but she put an apple in it. I don't think there was so much that about here, but not that. No, totally no, we never no, put spice. No, no, no. no, no. Yeah. Well, I think there was a similar type of thing there from one they call it box day, I think they fry it. Oh, well, this is sort of like potato day. bread. Uh, it comes out like potato bread. Hmm. Uh, they call it box day in from Aye. Anna. Aye, but you might nearly want him Lizzie's, Lizzie down there, Patsy's mother. <coughs> her sister used to come down from any skill <coughs> and I mind her making it. Right, and Lizzie kind of like so they, would, they would put it on raw spuds and boiled spuds. It was very chock, wasn't it? They would grate the raw spuds and then they would mix it with boiled spuds and put flour in it. And then they'd put, put it out there and cut it into four fires in the pan. Right. 
<laughs> I didn't care about it, Nick. A bit of a practice, wasn't it? Oh. But the pretty pudding was nice, now. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was lovely. Good stuff. Everybody made John pudding. here doesn't like it. Hey. Hey. John doesn't like it. Oh, he never got the right stuff or he would like it. <laughs> you know, not like Ian Lowe, he wouldn't take it at all. No. Tell you it's too strong. Uh -huh. Do you not like it, John? No. He ate the sauce when it was made. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it was great. Well, I see a lot of the young ones now, so you know I don't like it, I couldn't take it. I'm not sure what do they like. She don't know. Well, I thought, well, I see many of them. We used to be counting up for a month before to when we'd be getting the final fudge. That's right. And that used to be another thing too, was the new champ. New spuds, eh? The new spuds. God, that used to be an event. I, I, I have a son, and, and that's what he normally spreads for Christmas. Make a pretty pudding for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> We used to make them for Christmas oh, Eve. At uh, Christmas Eve. Right. And many of the time when we come home from the chapel on Christmas morning, it would be heated and you'd take it with a piece of butter. Mm -hmm. And you'd come out and you'd be quite hungry, man. Betty. Mm -hmm. And that's what we'd get. Mm -hmm. It was very nice. And it'd be even nicer the next day when it'd be warm. Mm -hmm. well, you mentioned the new sponge there. I know, that used to be a good something. When would the new sponge be ready? Well, Daddy was. Daddy ordered a very early guard. Yeah, they dug them on the 29th of June or the first Sunday in July. Well, what did, what did he put them in? Well, I'll tell you, he had a box. And he had the sponges, he picked the sponges. Mm -hmm. And he cut them and he put them in this box and put them in under his bed. And under the bed. Right. And whenever they come, just... Butted. Butted up. He put them in the back window there in the back. We had the pantry down there that way. Right. And he put them in the back window. Inside or outside? And inside. inside with the sun would shine. With the sun would shine on them in the evening. And that made the, that made the buds tough and right. they wouldn't break. Right. Then you would have dropped them, you dropped them very carefully at them spots up. Ah, you put the bud there. Uh, and we no length it would be up there. Yeah, but when would they put them in? Hmm? Oh, Daddy would put them in good and early. That in the season were a lot earlier than they are now. Was well, it not a tradition that they put them in? They put in some spots on Good Friday. Oh, Good Friday. 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 That was, Daddy yeah. used to always put the parties on on Good Friday. That's like if the weather was suitable. The only thing is, if you did that now, the frost would have them killed. Yes. The frost would kill them now. Well, Daddy yeah. didn't kill them, they didn't kill them. The hmm. more I seen Daddy in the parties, he had a whole lot of spuds in the little garden, that eh? And uh, I seen him, that was on the bonfire night, and he went with them in the far park, in the yeah. new park there as well. And they were blackened, they were as black as you, top of that cooker. The frost on the phone by night. Well, Frank Ward used to tell us he was a cousin of my father, he was a curate in Kellett at a time. And of uh, course, he'd only be short drills, he'd have sponged them very early. Right. And he'd this bit of a hair up. And before the sun would get up, him and the housekeeper would get up, everyone would then toss it round and knock the whole frost of them. Right. And they used to yeah. light it with a fire. But put on a fire of smoke. Smoky fire. A smoky fire, and that was to save them too. Well, that's what he would do. Wipe off the floor. You talked about the fire park there. Did you have names on the fields? Oh, I everything nearly had a name. And these, would you use many of them names now? You still would use them, would you? Oh, we would. We had oh. a field called Tavigny. Tavigny? Tavigny. Right. Remember that? Might have moss, would it? Eh? Was it a mossy or a swampy field? No, no it wasn't. The new park, that was, and that was, that was very... That would be a field that was broken. It must have been a field that uh, was broken. That broken. Same as you would go that to you Right. And, uh, Money will be there as a field and they call it the... the what do they call it, Dilly? Yeah. They have a field over there called the Stillhouse Field. There must have been potting made at the time. There must have been potting made at the time. Well, there's never any potting made in this part of the country. Oh. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> They oh, call it the still house. Oh, you never get well, caught in I don't know if you anybody to tell uh, me. Well, the still house fields. There must have been a still end at the time. Then I'm sure the, 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 that bomb we were out there, the Keen Barn, she was a place that they called the whiskey holes. Uh -huh. They used to make dishes. You know, they put them under you the... You know, Robert Ward that lived down there, they had fields, and they had this field called Isle Nellick. Uh -huh. They had upper Isle Nellick and lower Isle. And the Keenans up there in the field, and they called it... One of them was scal far scal and the other was near scal. And there was scal well as well, wasn't it? I scal well. well is right. I think Big Pat used to take water out of scal well. That's still does. That's still does. And that's then there's crocodile over here, isn't it? Ah, crocodile. Uh -huh. I never could find out what cheetah was now. Fairy. Cheetah. Well, uh, that was the fairy. The fairy hill. Ah. Uh -huh. 
Kieran Barn. Kieran Barn. I think you will have a young part more to go to Evelyn Salad, most of it in Evelyn. Then there's a place up there they call it Nelly's Garden and Nelly's Lane. Well, that'd be somebody that had a house there. Yes. I don't know. I never could always. They lived down there. No, it wasn't. And Patsy's field there behind the house. And she lived at the far corner of that. I can still see a whole very all the one in the field there. The field where her house was. And then there was a lane that went down to the burn. And they called that, why they called that field nearly of, of uh, lambs braised. There's people in the name of lambs. They had a house up there mm -hmm. on that wee hill. They called that lambs braised. You know when you're going up there to, as you go up towards the gap, uh, when you turn in on Kelly's Lane, you know that round hill there? That had the name of being a fort. That was. Yeah, that was a fort. That was a fort in its time. Well, how come that there's no hedges or anything on it? They turned out the mount. Well, that wasn't put I mean, the time they levelled that fort. Oh, I do too. Since you damned his mouth was got it. That was good. Have you taken over to see the fourth? Uh, over at Keenan's? Aye. Aye, we're over out there the day. But uh, about, it wasn't considered a very wise thing to do to It be, wasn't, no, nobody field. would touch it. No. Well, they didn't find anything in the level of it, did they? Well, they just leveled the ditches. They just leveled the ditches down, and the hill's still there, but any wee bushes was going on to cut them. But I don't think there was anybody man working it, and uh, yeah, it was handled the most of work. Or he went to the mental after it. He did. He did indeed. Well, the car did not look at it. What sports or anything about this? I'm sure Pat Keenan got a mess, you know. And he only cut bushes out of it to make stakes for the after they got Bog Street. Right. And he went and he cut, you know, cut bushes bit and then put a wire on them. Right. He'd never, I only lived about an eight year and a half. That's the one, we were up at that one today. Mm-hmm. That was a very, very big one. That was. Yeah, it's a very big one. It was very, and it's like, it's deteriorating now, like it's starting to crumble down, you know. Right. The, well, the Roberts the, and Kaplan and everything. That's what they're saying, they didn't, they didn't ask to preserve it. One down there from Mackin then too. Mackin. That is why they were called a fourth. That's right. They had a see, you'd see four. There'd be four in a row and the one could see from the other. And they called, that's why they were called the fourth. Now I read about them, you read about things and you should keep them. About what a fourth was. There was four, three, three mounds. Okay. And the first mound, that was where they lived. And the second mound was where they kept their cattle. And the third mound was the place where they fought. Mm, that's defence that the, the fend, that, that's that. That's the fend of the whole thing. And that, that the mound, like, the first one was the mound, that was where the... I can't mind it now, and I suppose I should have... That's like the centre of the village, you know, there's a... Aye. Uh, well, the first one was like that there, you know. Hey, it was higher than the rest. That's right. Well, that was supposed to be the place where they lived. Right. And then the place, and after that, when they took in their cattle, they take them to the second place. Right. Well, the cattle and on the race. Right, and then the place on the outside was the place where they defended their property. Right. Well, when you were going to school, was that in good condition, that fort? Well, we oh, were never... Oh, it was now. a lot better than it is now. A lot better. Nelly and, and when Frances was a child and she always wanted to get seen it and we took it out. But it was... Uh, wasn't too bad, that. It wasn't too bad, that. Then. We the went at the time the of year when the <coughs> blue belt was on. The banks would have been a lot higher, that's steeper. Ah, uh, they are surely they're crumbling down That's now. It. That's yeah. it. I see cattle grazing around in them. Well, then there was that one, and there's one under Mackin. And where's the other? There's there's a, well, there's one over there someplace. Is there one over there, Michael Hatton's garage? That you know, that brown hill there. Is that one? No. That's not one. No, that's not over there. But it's like a place to be, isn't it? Minnie Gorman always maintained that she seen the fairies not on that hill now. Right. But there's a, you know, place down and under. Right. There's, well, there's a wee burn in it. Right. And Minnie was one of these people she could have done with nearly knows. But she always maintained that she was out this morning, I don't know what she was, at five o'clock in the morning. Right. And she said she'd seen them dancing down in there. And she would have swore that to the day she died. That's up at that round hill we're talking about. Yes, but it was down in the hollow. A dark barn in the hollow hill? No, no. That was, um, we always called it Mary Susie's hill. Isn't there an art barn in town? Art barn's down, she can just live in art barn. That was down in the hollow. Right. That's where Maggie Keenan was rare. Well, Captain Keenan, how did he get oh, in he, there? Captain Keenan was, uh, um, 
He lived over there above Fort Wilson. Right. That's what he did. Didn't he get his, his name and connection with someone with the fairies? I don't know what. I don't know how it is that now. Well, I heard the story told that he, he again was coming late at the night, and night or early in the morning, and he come on, and there's, a, there's a, supposed to be a fairly pod along there. Uh -huh. And he stood and let them go by, and they all went by and said, Good night, Captain. And he got the name of Captain from that day onwards. That's the story of how I heard well, it. that could be. That's a likely enough story. But most people would have believed in the fairies, wouldn't they? Oh. They didn't. suspicion that they were there, they would be very hesitant to hear. Barney and Rocker used to tell that he heard the fairies the day they left Ireland. Why was it? When he was going, he said he heard them. But the way in a clown. The way in a clown that play music. But it wasn't it a nice thing to believe. Wasn't it, Bob? Yeah, these even people yet, you know, believe in gentle places that you shouldn't touch them. That's right. Well, if they were building a new house or anything like that there, they'd be very, they would want to find out, first of all, if the fairies wanted it there, wouldn't they? Oh, well, the time that you mind, I don't know if you ever, you know, horse threshers? Yes. The, the, the and we hear John McKenna the, telling us. The what's horse happened. would go round and round like that, do you see? Right. So they went and they made this place where they put the thresh and the horse would be going round and round. But every morning they broke, the place was changed to right. another place. Right. Three mornings after all. So finally they, the puppet where it was changed to. The fairies didn't want them thrashing no, there. No, that's no place. So that's not, right so not far from the port. Oh, no, but the keen is one big keen and belt. Right, right. And as if a round patch where the horse would go round to work on the thrasher. And three mornings after all, the, the, where they had it, it was changed to another place. I hear Daddy tell so me that. So finally they left. I didn't John McKeown and tell me that, Daddy. Mm. Like he was at the... It was bound to fix it. They had to make a ring round or something for the horses. That's right. We'd go round in the ring, you know, and put the thing round. And uh, he said when they had it, finally they had to. And of course, this other story was nearly about the, the big fella's woman, Mary Keenan. Ah. Ah, Keenan. There was a hedge down low it, and John McCain used to work about it. Right. So uh, she said that there's some other man would have took out this hedge. So they walked out, and the first day they were going back the next morning, Anne was in bed. And they went back the next day, and she was still in bed. And the third day, they went back, she called John up to the room. She, was, she said, John, she said, would you fix up that ditch again? She says, Anne, put as many of them bushes in as you took out. Leave it as, as near to where you got it. Mm -hmm. And the need on that, Anne is up and already. She said, mind out you old uh, French girl nearly telling us. And they were living down in Craig and that, I remember. Right. And so, you know what it was called. Right, that's right. right. And they said they were not his people now, but the next gen generation before him. And they said they, it was like that too, there was a crowd of men in it, and there was this place in it, like a fourth or whatever it was. And uh, the father said this one that he says, I think we'll dig that down, he says, and level it up that field, he says, and make a job out of it. Mm -hmm. So they straightened out down and started to cut the hedges or whatever was in it, and uh, the next morning they're out, there's a cow dead. But anyway, they didn't make any notice of that, they went on. And finally, there was on the third morning, the father said to me, he says, I think, he says, we've quit this boy, he says, there must be something wrong here. And he went to some neighbour man that was like this, with a folk pure. Well, he says, I'll tell you what you'll do, he says, everything that you took out of that place there, he says, Put it back the way you got, or you just shall not be a cow with your house. He 
Who's at the Hannah do it? Do he turn to that or should he stall it? We were very, very hesitant there about building anything. I thought it was a fair one to talk about a fairy's pod. Now, you see, like a lone tree there, a fairy tree, to be very delicate about cutting it. Mm. There was a lone tree there at Mulliston Gap. Do you, you wouldn't mind that, Paddy? No, I wouldn't. No, you wouldn't mind it. But before that was, it was like, you know, where the road went round to Kays. Right. And the road came down here. Right. The road went to Mulliston. It was like a triangle. You know, it used to be at the roads. Uh -huh. Well, there was a bush grew there, a thorn bush. But money not to her father said she meant a divvy case setting it. Like she wasn't there anything wrong with it. But anyway, when they were tearing the road, I mean John McCartan got a mission to tell it in Kelly's. But when the men come to this bush, you see that was the lone bush. Right. And uh, they said to them, what we'll do with this bush? Will we take it out or what will we do? Well he says you can do what you like with it, he says, but don't tell don't say I tell you to take it out. He says, I'm not telling you to take it out, he says, let it alone. But many not, they said like a she minded Davy Kells setting it there and that. And they used to go that built up with clay, you know, they used to That's gather right. there, you know, and sit and talk on it. That's but right. It, like it wasn't a fairy. But if there were anywhere there was <coughs> it was still a lone tree. It was a lone tree, you see, and that they thought maybe there was something to it. But you mind that clay, the Queen ghost. That's right. Well there's there's a lot there seemed to be a lot more ghosts in the country then than there are now. Aye. But the Queen ghost uh, that was still going. I mean, there was something really about that because everybody uh, went to see it. Well, it's well documented. The, the emigrated went to America and it followed them shortly to America. I remember us reading that uh, uh, well, article about, about five it. Five that, that, that place is between five mile town and that's lay. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, it's open there somewhere yeah. anyway. But, like, even, you don't have to even have to go that far. Like, lots of people believe that there are ghosts. You didn't have to travel very far until you, you came on a ghost. Well, the last night that we were in Hoyntons, God rest Mary Hoyntons, a great police didn't see Mary. But uh, she was like, she was a good unbelieved now. We used to go around and sit in the room with her and her and me was something. She started telling me about all these ghosts. And I think it was seven ghosts was from the corner of the road until six miles cross. Six miles cross. And she could tell me what all the ghosts were there, what made them be there, and everything about them. Mm -hmm. And she, if you said well, that, she would destroy you. Well, no, you wouldn't need a contradictor. Most people believe in ghosts yet. Oh, of course there are. People would be afraid of ghosts, sir. What would they be? Well, Please, oh, God save us if you were here mentioned that to Daddy, would devour you. He would destroy you for saying there's a yeah. ghost. Evil spirits. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it should used to be that the would die. Well, you see, you see that prayer for the mind after mass. That's right, all evil spirits are one that... to the world. The well, ruination of souls. Yeah. Well, I want to make us a cup of tea. Hoopla, hands up, who wants a cup of tea? Cat was wild here at the end of the war. That's right. That ended, and he said, well, he said, he used all the money he had buying cattle and, and hunting it there. Mm -hmm. And just something like that. Just overnight. Overnight went down, so they lost all, just cattle, nothing, there was no price for anything. No, see so they lost all the bit of money every had. Mm -hmm. I made daddy buying a cow and six pound cross fair for milk, and he paid £32 for it. And the next year, the week, the slump come on, and he had a seller because her milk was no good, she'd get plenty of milk, but like it was no, too, late. too, too late. late, he sold it for £9. Things must be an awful take oh, of that time. Oh, they were tough that time. Would many days. people have emigrated from this part of the oh, country? Oh, should the God, sure. Our so whole family emigrated. Yeah. During the 30s, there was no place to go to in the 30s. Yeah. Our first you sister, go to the road. Our sister Mary, was, she was married before she left. She married a fellow called McGinley down to McKillop. She left in 1928. And then our brother John went the next year in April. And then our two sisters went that year in June. Four of them went away. Uh, and my father never seen them again. Because they had hard times there too. That's right. That's right. Uh, it would be worse well, than that. Uh, because uh, the last one, 28 and then 29, and then once the authority came in, was the crash then in 1930. That was it, right? Because the banks not closed. Now, well, that's what Nora said. She said there was people, girls worked in Canada that time. Now everyone's weren't too bad. But uh, she said there was girls worked to get a roof over their head and get their food. That's right. And they well, didn't there were get people. Not there was a penny. So no, what? there was no like no look about them, same as there is now. They can't do that kind of no. thing now. 
There's a place where you go and if they're mouth eating you or anything like that. They have to sure. back in the thirties you couldn't get a shell, never mind a pound. No. <coughs> it was terrible no. hard times. But still and all we survived. I mean nineteen thirty one was a very bad year. It was very bad crops. Survived. Oh. Sport was a failure. People didn't hardly get their torpent. That was a hard one to but I think it doesn't do people any harm. I mean, if you do come up hard, as we are now, we're living on our pension, of course, but we have plenty of money to do it, and you appreciate it now when you do have it. You look back on you, when you look back on the things and the hard times you had you're, and all you're that. Taught, you're taught economy. I'm telling you, they're rare too so now. If we'll come up again hard times, what did they do? Couldn't survive. You were telling us earlier about the made brick locally. Where, where did they make the brick? Over there. And that killed them. And I don't know where they got the brick. Where did they get the clay from, Nelly? Eh? Where did they get the clay from? What is this? is all blue clay. What it's all a blue clay boiler. Now, Paddy, Paddy, of course, they broke up the land, but there was a place up there where they built their barn and their house with it. The Grugans, the were who, who was the man that made the brick? What family oh, was so it? Oh, so the, you could, the, the they, men would, would dig them out of the ground and uh, and a thing for shaping them, do you see? Yeah. And they shape them right old. out of the blue clay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, then they built these all around and they shaped them an arch. And then they were all in the But they had to dry them for that. They had to dry them for the arch, you know, before they the wore them. The and then well, they, there was a way of building them. Now, not everybody, there was some men could build Mind them. Paddy big, was a great and then they, they burned them for three days and three nights. You had to get the same heat to them. That's right. I mind uh, John McKeown in there building the brick. Jimmy, do you mind? Ah, do you mind Mickey Pat rolled that one too? That's only two brick kills, but there's only certain men... And who, who, who owned the brick kills? That brick kill over there, that was, that's from the farmer's land now. I suppose everybody would use it that time, and... And now, uh, that Paddy Brook in there, he's... He's a grandmother, where she lived up there. There's a place they call it the brick hole, but they dug out the clay. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the land here is blue clay. Mm -hmm. And she's down at, down at Granny's. Our grandmother, she was Kelly from Crop Inn. Well, show that field up there in front of the bungalow, they call it the brick hole. That's what they took the, the blue clay, the blue clay yeah. out. They made it a blue clay. Mm -hmm. That's why they done it. It took an awful lot of heat. And they worked the hard, mind you, that. See, like, well, the, our house was built with brick. No, in that barn, see all them so houses, they was all brick. brick. But they all burned them. Mm -hmm. They were all burned them. Because but how did they find this out? This is what I often wonder at. Okay. And they would go at the time that they were put, you see, this is where we were put out here. See, we the time the of the evictions, do you see? The wards lived up on Bracca. And the green and our, our great grandfather was Huey Ward. And he was, all the Catholics was evicted. And the wards took from that good land down and Bracca down here. Where's Bracca now? Where's that? Bracca, it's uh, that's about three miles. That's in Bear Parish. Mm -hmm. yes. It's about yeah. three miles from here. When you go up there to Wallaceland Gap, there's a road round there, about a mile round there, you're into Fracking. And uh, they were affected to come down here. Well, the first thing they had to do is make themselves some kind of a house. So they would have walked with and, uh, and how did they find out that time? I often wondered, uh, who told them about it? I mean, when they wanted a, a, the roof of the, of the house, yeah. that was the big stick. That's right. Well, are they you to go and part of the Grass was wet where the frost had no effect on it. That is where they got the... That's where they used to get a blow from the wall. That's where they got the... That's where the they got the tree. Oak timber. That's, that's right. Timber. No, that's that's right. right. The dew wouldn't, the dew wouldn't lie in any place with a block on the wall. That's, that's, right. right. that's where they found it out. I mean, our house was that stuff my father died. It was all... That's what they call the roof rub, this big thick that's stick. That's right. And then there was all the ones down. And then there's a wee fine which you call them wattles. And then the, the these scrawls then. The and they go to the walls and put the, the scrawls then was put over the wattles and then the thatch was put over that. That's right. And, uh, and do you the see that there? Look. The, the swords then held the, the scrawls. Do you see that there? Yes. That was dug out of the wall. That's a bog stick. The time that we made that, that used to be a room up there. That used yeah. to be our hen house. That used to be our hen house. But there was a, a, a room seeming in it at some time. As some of the older men, the wards, got married and they didn't agree with their wives yeah. and they closed that door and she got up there yeah. but that was for the top of the door 
And perhaps in the end that we renovated the house practices his noises. It was as sound as the day it came out of the box. And he said he wouldn't take it down. He said, I'll not take it down, he said, I'll put it on the top of that. Yeah. So we still put it there. Oh, you couldn't put a nail in it. Yeah. You couldn't put a nail in it. No, it's as hard. You, you wouldn't. You yeah. wouldn't. But I say, how did they find all that out? Well, and they how probably did they found out about the brick, maybe. Some of the earlier houses were built to sod. Oh, I have blood Maybe with the fire, the Do you see that before we renovated the house? Do you see that wall down there? Well, of course, it's not, it's not that wall or the wall on the other side. But I that oh, that lead, see, wasn't marked, it was blue clay, was blue it? Blue clay was on it. Mm -hmm. The same we renovated the but house. But I'd say when they were evicted first down here, they just had to build sod houses. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Maybe where the hearth was, and maybe they found out that it baked hard. You know, they must have done it. something like that. They found yeah, it out. Found out well, they must have found it out themselves. Mm -hmm. well, you know, they just quick to learn, you know. Oh, quick to the learn. intelligence of the world is in Ireland. That's right, quick to learn. They are indeed. They and I tell you the thing about the Irish men of those days, they were hard workers. And even they didn't know whether it was going to be a success or not, they would try it. They were venturesome. But you see, way back in our early days, where we lost a lot of the things that we could have found out, nobody bothered about it. Nobody bothered asking. Nobody bothered asking. Like, there's lots of things now that I'd love to have asked Daddy or... But see, oh. things like that don't last. Them evictions now, where the wards are down here, there were families in the Cambers and after them. And he used to be just the whole town around a bracket. And now there's not a McKeever bracket. Not one. Not one. There's not one in it. No. Descendants in it. Mm -hmm. See, it doesn't last a thing like that. It might last for a generation or so.